Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to, I, to a show, which I think, uh, this may be the best show we've ever done. <laughs> Two things. One, I said might. <laughs> Two, it's not finished yet. <laughs> but the chances are good, because my next de guest, my next guest, oh yes! <laughs> In a change of plans, we're not having any more guests. From now on, guests. <laughs> My next guest is a fantastic comedian. She, our comedy CD is out, uh, I Heart Jokes. It's in stores now. She'll be in Boston on January 24th. I think she's doing comedy. She's not just, like, going there. And, <laughs> and then Baton Rouge on January the 31st. Please welcome the adorable Paula Poundstone, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, you know, I'm not going to say Happy New Year because I don't want to date the show in case they want to use it again for like a rerun or something if Craig's on vacation or maybe a best of. I, I hurt my back uh, over the holiday whenever that was. good insurance and so like so many of us I have to kind of cut corners when it comes to health care uh, for example one time I thought I had broken my wrist and so what I did was uh, when I went to the airport and I went to security I left my hand on the bag <laughs> for a few extra seconds and then I ran around and looked at the screen and there it was a hairline fracture <laughs> And security missed it. <laughs> what I've been doing for my back, uh, because I can't possibly afford to go to a doctor, so what I've been doing is going to doctor's waiting rooms. And what I do is I look for someone else who's bent over in pain the same way that I am. And after they come out, I say, what did the doctor say? <laughs> to more than one waiting room because it's good to get a second opinion. <laughs> you know, a while ago, uh, I bought a yoga mat and uh, not for doing yoga, obviously, but uh, <laughs> it was actually to, um, uh, to prevent a piece of equipment from scooching on the stage during my son's t school's talent show. But when I bought the yoga mat, it had this cardboard packaging and on the packaging it said, Call your doctor before using the yoga mat. <laughs> now, I don't think I could get a doctor on the phone if I cut my head off. <laughs> I can't even imagine the conversation. <laughs> Hi, this is Paula Poundstone calling. Um, is Dr. Tejlimi there? <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, no, don't get him out of surgery. Just, <laughs> could you just give him a message for me? <laughs> could you just tell him that I've bought a yoga mat? <laughs> and that I'm going to use it? <laughs> There's gotta be a reason they printed that there. It, 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 you know, you follow the money, they must have been sued. They, they had to have been sued, which means that somewhere, someone was doing some sort of a lotus position that was perhaps too advanced for them. <laughs> and they pulled something and they said, oh, gee, ow, ow, ow. Uh, who makes this yoga mat? <laughs> I am going to sue the sh hell out of this yoga mat company. <laughs> I, by the way, I hurt my back. Uh, I was climbing on a, down a ladder and I coughed. I did not fall. <laughs> I just coughed. And let me tell you, there was not one warning on this ladder. <laughs> tell you something. I'm gonna sue the sh hell 
out of this ladder company. So that's what I've been dealing with over the holiday, whenever that was. It was a back injury and my almost 18 year old daughter, who by the way is going to be the keynote speaker at this year's unmotivated high school student convention. And she is gonna rock the house. Her school is absolutely killing me. The way they deal with no child left behind is they have everybody hang back. <laughs> they have, they, in order to graduate from high school now, the students have to pass an exit exam. But at our school, I don't know if it's this way where you all, at our school, they, if they can't pass, they allow them to stay until they're 22. <laughs> they call them super seniors. <laughs> And unfortunately, they are not bright enough to realize that they're being mocked. <laughs> Some of them wear capes. <laughs> well, Happy New Year, and have a safe summer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Please, sit down. Yeah. Can I get, would you like a cushion? Would you, do you want a cushion? Oh, I don't need a cushion. All right, I use a cushion here. You do use a cushion. I do. I only use a cushion, though, to make me taller than everyone else. I know you were, you were towering over Ted Danson. I was. Okay, I was anybody else creeped out by Ted, da Ted Danson? Well, it was his son-in-law that was proposing to the daughter, and they were behind a tree? Yeah. Didn't that bother anybody else? Well, I think it's the first his daughter knew of it was when she uh, heard him talk about it tonight. Hey, what if she'd see it? What if she's like, oh, who's behind that tree? Is that my parents behind the tree? I yeah. don't know. I see that as a private moment between fiancé and, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah. But I, I, so it's when Ted you, Dancing, though. It's Ted Dancing. Yeah, but that's... I mean, no, I mean fair I enough, the, but it's Ted Dancing. <laughs> I think the daughter is used to Ted Danson by now and is not all that oh, impressed. Oh, come on. How can, you, how can you be used to Ted Danson? She must go down to breakfast in the morning and go, Oh, my God, Ted Danson! <laughs> He'd be like, I'm your dad. Yeah. yeah. She goes down every morning and says, Breakfast for everyone! <laughs> Line them up! Because he was a bar uh, he was a, bartender. He was a bartender on in Cheers. Years. I don't yeah, know if yeah. you. No. Apparently, you haven't followed Ted's career. I'm not originally from America. No. no when I'm... you proposed to your wife, by the way, yeah. were your parents behind a tree? Because <laughs> I just find that the first awkward. one. The, the first, first one. one yeah. they were, well, yeah. actually, the... that's like entrapment for God's sakes. That's not right. I'll tell you something. <laughs> if they haven't had sex yet, she better check the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I... Honey, honey, what's that noise? <laughs> honey, I, I, Making I, your way in the world today. <laughs> <thanks. laughs> I just... I just saw George Went in the bathroom. <laughs> George <laughs> Went in the bathroom? <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. We don't do that here. Okay. Um... <laughs> Hey, is that true about the high school seniors thing? Is that yeah, absolutely super seniors. true? Yeah. See, I was already working on my first divorce when I was 22. That yeah. is it. A lot of the super seniors are too. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's where some of the distraction comes in. Well, they that's going to get in the way of Three ACT. or four kids and a divorce going on by then. <laughs> <laughs> they have a backpack and a snuggly. I don't think. That's a honey, snuggly? Honey. That's not the sign for snuggly. <laughs> the same for Ted Danson! Yeah, a lot of times the baby's carrying mommy's pencil bag. That's a shame. It is a shame. Hey, we're, we're out of time, but will you... What do you mean we're out of time? Well, you know, the show's plenty of time for Ted Danson. <laughs> it's Ted Danson! It's Ted Danson! Let's just check with that we're really alone. Yeah, anybody's... And sometimes when he sees you, he goes like this. You have to... Oh, never mind. Paul and Feinstein, everybody. We'll be right back.
is a comedian. Uh, she's at the Guthrie Theatre, Minneapolis, on May the 18th, the day after my birthday. Um, <laughs> our comedy CD, I Heart Jokes, is available on our website. Please welcome the very funny, the adorable Paula Poundstone, everybody. Paula Poundstone. much. Thank you very much. The Supreme Court has ruled that we cannot say the F word on television, not even once, like Cher did on some award show. <laughs> <laughs> or the FCC can find the network. I love Craig Ferguson, so I am going to be very careful tonight. <laughs> But I certainly don't see what the big crime is. Although I'm glad we've gotten to the bottom of it because so many unanswered questions for America. We don't really know whether or not we can torture, but now with certainty we know there are some words we cannot say. <laughs> People can pretend there's bad words if they want to, but I have three kids to raise, and I really got to focus on the important stuff. I have a fifth grader who hates school. Every time we drive past his school, he says, I'm going to blow that place up. <laughs> <laughs> I try to motivate him. I said, well, I don't think you got enough science for that, do you, honey? <laughs> Just you got to work with what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Raising kids is not easy at all. And uh, I gotta tell you something, every now and then I feel a little sorry for Joan Crawford. <laughs> I'm not saying I think it's okay to beat your kids, but I am saying my guess is she said no wire hangers nicely several times. <laughs> My son would tell you that on Friday night, I blew up and yelled, pick up your sock, and cursed. And he'd be right. <laughs> but what he wouldn't tell you, and probably doesn't even know, is that on Monday night, we were on our way out of the car, as we are every five nights a week, uh, coming home from gymnastics. And I was loaded down with bags. I had the snack bag, and the beverage bag, and some water bottles, and a Tupperware container, and some books, and the cello, and a dog leash with a German shepherd on the end of it. <laughs> and my children leap blithely from the car and run empty-handed to the front door and tell me that I have to hurry with the key because they need to pee. <laughs> so I've been asking my son to change his clothes in the car. So I've been asking him to please bring his own clothes in, which means that nightly there is a trail of socks and underwear going from his seat in the car towards the washing machine. So on I told him, I said, inventory. You know, you got one butt and two feet. If you get to the washing machine and you don't have two socks and a pair of underwear, then get the Hardy Boys and go back because you got a mystery to solve. <laughs> so on Monday night, he dropped his sock by the little table in the ballroom. And I said to him, I said, honey, you dropped your sock. Could you just pick it up and put it in the laundry? And he said, yes, mom. So on Tuesday morning, when I saw the sock there, I said, honey, you know what? That sock is still there, I guess you forgot. If you could just grab it, pick it up, pop it in the old washing machine, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you, honey. I really, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> so on Tuesday night, when I saw the sock there, I said, honey, you know what? I see you forgot the sock again. If you could just pick it up and put it in the wash, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> So on Wednesday night, after walking by the sock all day long, I said, honey, mommy has OCD and it's really hard for me to walk by the sock that many times. If you could just put it in the wash, I'd really appreciate it. So on Thursday night, when I saw the sock there, I said, honey, you know, the truth is I could put the sock in the laundry for you, but I don't think that's what's best for you. Because you know what? I'm hoping in eight, nine, 15 years or so, you move out of here and you'll be able to put your own sock in the laundry. I said, do you remember on The Miracle Worker when Helen Keller's parents let her grab the food running around the table and then they had to hire Ann Bancroft to beat the stuffing out of her in the summer house? Well, I don't want that to happen to you. So if you could just put the sock in the laundry, I would appreciate it. So 
so it is true that on Friday night I said, put your what Cher said sock in the laundry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bless you. There man. it is. There it is. You got all sorts for it. Wow. Go oh, with the kids and the socks and it sounds... What age are your kids now? That one's 18. Wow. <laughs> have you got the teenagers? No, you got I, the have te a, I have an 18-year-old and I have a 15-year-old and I have an 11-year-old just turned. Oh, that's, that's a lot of uh, pop culture and Jonas Brothers and Spongebob and the... Uh, Twilight. Did they make you watch the Twilight? My daughter, Allie, made me watch Twilight over and over again. She made me watch it at the 9.30 showing on Christmas night with a backache. I hate that movie that more than I can do. That's a bad movie. That's a bad movie. Have you seen the special features? No, I can't say as I have, yeah, actually. Yeah, because it no, came no. out on, on DVD. The, I, no, I saw it on the, the pay-per-view. It was either that you or... You saw it on the pay-per-view? Where were you that you would pay? No, no, the pay... <laughs> On the TV, they get the pay-per-view on the TV. What's pay-per-view? Pay-per-view. <laughs> Do you have a television? We, I, we have a television. I don't, I don't allow my children to watch TV. Well, that's not entirely true. I tell them they can watch it. But it just can't be on. They cannot right, turn it okay, on. Right, right. Now, that, now that seems fair to me. But they can watch it. Are you really close friends with the Obamas? Uh, yeah, yeah, very, very. Uh, we, we, yeah, we, uh, we go everywhere together. <laughs> Why on earth? Why on earth no, would you think you that? because you told Lawrence that, uh, that Obama calls you after the show yeah. to give you notes. No, that was a lie. <laughs> you you he, lied to Lawrence Fishburne? Dr. Lawrence Fishburne, yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> Gotta tell you something, the doc bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, yeah, he think, yeah. <laughs> Yo, no, he's out here thinking, I think Obama's going to come to my show. Ferguson's really going to get him there. I know, I know. And, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it might, it might well happen, but, uh, but I think that it, that it happening because he was here, not so much. No. I mean, Sarah, I might get him Sarah Palin. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Do you enjoy Sarah Palin? I'm really... I'm pleased about the whole Sarah Palin phenomenon because now many children know that Alaska is not in a box just off the coast of California. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, she's she's got the. It's, oh, it's up there. Because they think it's on the way to Hawaii. I think that no. that was her best contribution. Oh no, no, really? I, yeah, no. I do. I think it was her best contribution. That, yeah. You know, uh, boy, the Biden thing. He was so good in those presidential debates. Joe Biden. Yeah. And yeah, he how? loves trains, that guy, doesn't he? I mean, I mean he loves, he loves trains. trains. He's always banging on about trains. Oh, trains, I tell you, if we could just build more trains, America would be great again. Let's build a train over to Europe. And uh, he's crazy. <laughs> he's nuts for trains. Lock it off with the trains, Biden, I want to say to him, but he would ignore me because he doesn't know who I am. Was that... <laughs> Was that, was that on pay-per-view? I've never heard him talk about trains. Oh, no, he's always going on I've about trains. I've never heard him talk about trains. I've, just, have... I've heard him go off. I've heard him, I, I heard him, I heard him even one of the, in the vice presidential debates. I heard him uh, say that uh, in America, you know, we're, we're about equality. And, and he went on and on and on with everything that made it sound like he was for same-sex marriage. And then they, she said, well, are you for same-sex marriage? And he goes, oh, no. He's for he, same-sex he marriage if it's on a train. He gave... <laughs> that, that's the way it is. He's like, yeah, yeah, the gays can marry up as long as they're travelling above 65 miles an hour. <laughs> it's like speed, but with scatter cushions. Only on the Silver Streak. <laughs> yeah, that's... We're out of time, Paula. We're completely out of time. What do you mean we're out of time? We're out of time. Now, I'm going to have to do to you what I did to what Dr. Did Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, you boy, you just threw the doctor I threw right about, on off. Threw, threw about. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Paula Poundstone, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'll tell you that, that sketch better be good, because uh, we've been running trailers for it all week, and uh, we haven't shot it yet. I'm sure everything will be fine. What's the worst that can happen? The roof could cave in and we'll all be drowned. Do we have time for emails, Craig? 
Was that the door? Oh, hi, hi, it's Paula Poundstone, everybody. Hey, Paula Poundstone. Hi, Paula. Uh, hey. Hi, Paula. Whoa. Hey, uh, hey thanks well, for letting me use your dressing room. No, that's all right. It's, uh, Mine it, was flooded. You had to get certified in scuba diving to even come here tonight. Flooded. It's, there's a light rain in L.A. Knock it off. It, no, I, I barely got here. It was misting. <laughs> Hey, uh, I don't, uh, you, uh, you catch me, I'm rather embarrassedly in the middle of doing the emails. Will you do the emails with me? I'll do the emails. All right, then. Yeah, all, right. all right. All right. Aren't they usually on a computer screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, if you've got a computer, that's one way to go. We, uh, we get ours typed out by a team of uh, uh, short people. I'm, you, in your dressing room, your computer is soaked right now, so don't even bother. I don't, I don't, stop making up this lie I have a dressing room with a computer in I don't have a computer or a dressing room. Well, I, t I turn up here, I try and disguise myself and come in with some Australians, and then <laughs> I sneak in every night. All right, this is from Erica in Alfreta in Georgia. You ever been to Alfreta? Alfreta? Mm. No. Are you saying it right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's probably my accent. Well, oh, well, maybe it's Alpharetta. If there's... Is it Alpharetta? Well, if there's vowels in it, there could be trouble. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Alpharetta, right it there. It looks like Alpharetta. Right, yeah, okay, Alpharetta. thanks. Thanks for your confirmation. All right, well... Well, you want to ask me then? Because it's addressed I'll, to me. You I'll ask me. I'll tell you what yet. it says. It says, I know about all the bad things you've done. <laughs> Why did you read it in my book, American on Purpose? That's available in all fine bookstores. There, there, there should be a box around here somewhere. Yeah, um, knock it off. Uh, no, it says where is the best place to buy this. You know what? And they couldn't have sought a, a better uh, a, a source of information here. Where's the best place to buy emerald jewelry in the Bahamas? Is that what, is that what they say? Where's the best place to buy emerald jewelry in the Bahamas? I just read it. That's what it says. I did, sorry. I, if there's vowels in it, there could be a problem. You know, that's why you, I. You, to validate. Yeah, that's what it says. Well, yeah, that's yeah, what well, it I'm says. Just, you know, I'm no, just letting folks read at home, trying to be some kind of, you know, trying to do my best for the folks at home. Just trying. Where? Trying. So do you know where the best place? To... I do. Yeah, I do know. I'm not mentioning where it is. I don't actually, I don't know if you should buy emerald jewellery in the Bahamas because of the tax coming back into America if you live here. But if you don't, What's the problem? Well, I think... <laughs> it's, she's from Alpharetta, Georgia. Oh, yeah, you remembered that, did you? Yeah. 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 Um, how, how did the test go for you? Well, they, well becoming an American? Yeah. It did, was really easy. Did they mention Alpharetta, Georgia? Nah, it's nah. Part, you're going to pay those taxes coming back into Alpharetta, Georgia. No, no, they didn't mention any of that. No. No, the test to become an American citizen was, uh, do you like soda? Yes. Do you... <laughs> Do you hate Al-Qaeda? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to America, son. Wow. Here's a good one, here's a good one, here's a good one. All right, all right, you ready? This is from Ellie in Aberdeen in South Dakota. From who? Ellie. Ellie. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she says, Dear Craig, men are pretty awesome most of the time, but my usually cool tough guy boyfriend is a whiny baby now just because he has a little cough and a few aches and pains. What's up with men making such a big deal and being so wussy like that? It's to you. What do you think? I'm just here. I'm here to bring out what you think. Are you a therapist? <laughs> well, I, I think no. Too late. Um... All right. How are you? Not that you're a cross section of every man, but how are you when you're sick? Well, I I get sicker than most people when I'm sick. Because I am flamboyant. So if I have a slight fever, it's like, I have a fever. Oh my God. How are you when you get sick? I'm, well, I'm not as flamboyant as you. All right. Uh, I, you know what? I, got, I had swine flu last year, and I think I handled it very well. You had swine flu last I year? I did. That's before anyone else had it. You're yeah. like ahead of the curve, girl. <laughs> You really had swine flu? I did. I had this swine flu. I'm kind of cutting what's edge it, that way. What's it, what's it like? Forget the emails. What the hell is this swine flu like? What? 
Well, it wasn't that bad. I woke up one morning uh, on a bed of Teflon with two eggs beside me, but other than that... <laughs> Wait, you're mocking me. You're mocking me I'm because not... I'm stupid. I'm talking rock of love stupid. No, you know what? I barely got here tonight because some jerk was out on the freeway yelling douchebag. All right. Well, thanks to everybody. We'll be right back. Please welcome Paula Poundstone, everybody. Paula Poundstone. Hey, thank you very much. It's so nice to be here. I love being on the show, but I got to be honest with you right up front. Uh, when comics are supposed to come out. We're supposed to do, you know, four or five minutes, and uh, you finish with a big joke. And uh, I don't have a big joke to finish with, and I just want to be up front with you. <laughs> I, you know, what I like about Craig's show is that it's not phony, like a lot of the, a lot of the late night talk shows are phony, and, and they have a band, for example, and then when you don't have a joke, you know, the band just plays and the crowd knows, that was it, boy. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that's what, a, that's what a band is for. The band is so that if your jokes don't go over, you got somebody to talk to. And uh, Craig's, Craig's not like that. When his jokes don't go over, he, he talks to you. <laughs> he talks to you. He's a, he's a very real, real person. I think that's part of the reason probably that Obama won't be on this show. And... Uh, <laughs> Like what he was saying about the New Zealand premier guy, or what, right? Just, I, I don't, I don't like to see uh, the world leaders, uh, certainly not my president, on on late night talk shows. I, 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 although Obama right now is just doing show after show to explain his health care proposals, and uh, we gotta, we gotta vote, we gotta pass something soon, or he's gonna be a regular on General Hospital. We gotta move. <laughs> we gotta move on this. the rest of you, but I only have, even if I manage to get a few minutes to watch the news a day and, and somebody can actually be explaining something to me about the healthcare thing, man, that is great with me. But when I flick on the news and they have those nutty, shouty, outy people at the town hall thingies, that's all they follow. There can't be that many of them. Who could be that? We're not all that screwed up. <laughs> the things they're shouting, they take us off topic. What, what was the one the other day? Okay, look it. And I, let me just say right up front, because I'm not phony, I'm gonna tell you right up front, I know virtually nothing about healthcare reform, but I would be willing to bet my life that there is no, on any plan, on any proposal, a chloroforming grandpa day. <laughs> I just, you know what, with my eyes closed, I can know that. I don't have to read. We don't need the three, four days to read the legislation. I know that. I, 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 you know, the odds of our having to use the same rectal thermometer are very, very slim. <laughs> They're not helping the shouty outy people. And you know, you know there, were, there were people in the United States of America that did not want our president to address our school children. Why? What? There's a guy at our elementary school who comes every year to talk to the kids about selling cookie dough so they can win an iPod. <laughs> I think we can fit the president in. I really do. When Rob Lowe, years ago, got popped for videotaping sex with some young woman, his community service was that he had to talk to school children. <laughs> Gee, I think we can shoehorn the president on in that schedule. <laughs> and, and what did he want to say to our kids? He wanted to say, stay in school, work hard, and wash your hands. <laughs> Let him get blue in the face. Let him do it. <laughs> I've 
told my kids those things over and over again. They don't listen to me. I saw the uh, Kennedy, the tribute to Kennedy, to his kids talking, and they would say, geez, you know, they would say, I remember, I, they would say, I will never forget when my father said that nothing is impossible. I, I, all I could think of is my kids are not going to remember a damn thing I ever said to them. <laughs> Maybe it's, what, what would they remember anyways? Pick up your feet. <laughs> Boy, I wish you had a band. I'm being the band. I Good really appreciate it. Thank you so much. See, See, when you first came out there, when you said, I like the show because it's not phony. It's not and I phony. went, not phony? I thought we were very phony. We were very phony right there at the beginning. <laughs> that crocodile's phony. There's nothing wrong with the croc, the croc. And then I thought, well, it's phony. Phony. It's, yeah. It's it was your, your accent. I couldn't understand it. It's, <laughs> your accent is messing you up again. I, I know. You know why Obama won't be on this show? Because people know that you're not from this country originally. Yeah. And he doesn't want to be associated with anybody where they can say, oh, see? He's from Scotland? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's... That's one of the reasons yeah, yeah, well... Obama won't be on this show. But, you know, there's a, I, I've seen some of the shouty Audi people myself on the TV, but I don't think any of them are seriously going to try and claim that President Obama is from Scotland originally. <laughs> Lou Dobbs tonight. You think? Do you watch a lot of that? Because that drives me... When I watch the politicals, either side of them, I watch enough, I go, oh, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. I can't take no, it anymore. No, it, I, I watch CNN because it's there. Right. Because it's just there. It's on 24 hours a day. But what I'm finding is that that's too much time for them. Yeah. So... That's why... That's... It's true. And that is why... That is why they have Larry King. <laughs> Because Larry fills up, there's a whole areas of hours of television where he just goes, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and people are like, oh, Larry, he gets all, the, all the world leaders go on Larry King. You know why? Because they know they can run rings around him. That's why. Is, is, I think he's having Gaddafi soon, right? Yeah, Isn't I'm sure he? he'll have. No, he said yeah. he had Gaddafi yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, he did already? I think so. I was, yeah, he, I think they were, they had a good old chat about brisket or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing about him. He goes to the heart of the issues and really uncovers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... You ever been on Larry King? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was on once. Is he very farty? He was here. He didn't fart that much. But Did he I fart? He yeah, well, he I heard he's very farty, but when he was no. here, I, I asked him about it, and he said that he had farted once, but it was in Atlantic City many years ago. <laughs> You actually asked Larry King if he farted? You asked that? Yeah. I don't have a band. What the hell else am I going to do? I just came up with the second reason Obama's not going to be on this show. No, 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 come on. To be fair, to be fair, I wouldn't yeah. ask the president if he was farting. How do you know he's not going to be on the show? I heard he was thinking about it. Oh, that Obama was thinking about it? Maybe. You're a bastard. <laughs> He might be thinking about it. He could be watching right now thinking, no. you know, that guy, I could run rings around him. He no. could be... I'll tell you something. If he can't get on Dancing with the Stars, he'll be here. Oh, but that's... Man. Do you watch that? No, I've, I have tried to get on Dancing with the Stars, but I've never watched it. You tried to get on it? Yeah. Why? What do you mean, why? It's not good. I saw the... Hey, hey. It's not good. <laughs> No. That's exactly I, right. I thought that if I was on it, it would be, be good. good. Yeah. Oh, well, that's so fair enough. It was just me trying to serve again. But they have, to, they have, they had Tom Delay on that show. I heard that. Tom that Delay horrifying? dancing. Yeah. 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 That's not good. No, that that's is not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. No, that's bad. No, Tom that's Delay bad. should be maybe in court, but not in. <laughs> Just the very idea of Tom Delay. Tom Delay. Delay. Imagine yeah. you had to dance with him. Imagine you go on the show yeah. and like, your dancing partner, Tom Delay. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> or, or how about the, the mayor of the mayor of Cleveland? Yeah. Or the mayor of East uh, East Cleveland. No. East Cleveland, the mayor I should of say. East Cleveland looked like it wouldn't be bad, but I yeah, gotta yeah. say, uh, 
if I were on uh, Dancing with the Stars, which, let's face it, is, is a possibility. Um, if I were on Dancing with the Stars, I think I would say to them, where did Tom DeLay dance? And then I wouldn't go in that section. You, you can't make up your rules like that. Come on. That's not right. No, you see, like the, this see your show, we make up, you make up. That's what I like about this show. You defy some of the rules of t television late night talk shows. You know why? No. Oh, money. <laughs> don't have any. Don't have any. We, don't have any. we don't have any money. I'll tell you, this is true, right? The reason, wh why do you think we don't have a band? Because I have made some kind of artistic decision that yes! we don't have a band. <laughs> Are you crazy? I, I mean, if we could have at least an accordion player, I would do it. I'll tell you something. My son uh, plays the drums and the cello, and it's so hard to wait, get him to wait. practice. Wait, wait, that's awesome. Drums yeah. and cello at the same cello. time? No, not at the same time. <laughs> but it's very hard to get him to practice, but if I told him he could be on your show while he practiced... <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I see where and you're then, going, so yeah. it's a win win. Win if you include the cello. <laughs> how, much would the, how, how much would the young man want? A lo he, he's, yeah. He, well, he gets $4 a day. Well, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> no, he doesn't necessarily get the $4 a day. He gets $4 a day if he can do his responsibilities without mentioning the computer first. I haven't paid him in months. <laughs> You know, you should really meet Gaddafi. Because well, I, because yeah, I, because you I like to, yes. yeah. You're exactly yeah. right. I'm yeah. very, yeah. I'm really trying to get my son on the straight and narrow, and has not been easy. I, so I like him to play the cello because I'm hoping that it gets him into a better gang. I just. Uh... <laughs> oh, it'll get him into a gang, all right. Yeah. I don't even know what that means by that. Uh, I don't I, even know what see, I mean. See, but that's by... the thing about your relationship with yeah. the crowd. It's so beautiful. See, they knew. I wish... <laughs> then I wish they would tell me. Yeah, they... Yeah, everybody. We'll be right back. Please welcome Paula Poundstone, everybody. Paula Poundstone. But you know what's great about being me? I'm single. I can buy myself a treadmill and really enjoy it. <laughs> it's so great. I want to welcome, I know there's a lot of tourists here today, and I would like to be the first to welcome you to California, the state that leads the nation in the to hell in a handbasket races. <laughs> We are so proud. I, we are so broke as a state. Our school district is cutting everything. The, I think uh, this year we may not have an art program at all in our school. And last year we had brushes but no paint. <laughs> well, which makes the protege thing really hard to pull off. Uh, in order to have a science teacher in our elementary school this year, each student has been asked to bring in a body part. <laughs> They're going to assemble it, and he, she, or it will be the science teacher. <laughs> very, very good news. I, it, one of the things in California that people are very upset about right now in Los Angeles is that um, uh, they're trying to add those cameras to the red lights. Um, but honestly, so many of us don't have money that it's really the best shot we have at a decent family photo. <laughs> Load the whole family in the front seat, gun it through town. <laughs> but you know what frustrates me the most is that the thing that's costing us so much money in the schools is that they keep buying computers. I, I, in my opinion, kids do not need computers to learn. The guys who wrote the Constitution didn't even have a ballpoint pen. <laughs> I don't think we need computers. And they're so expensive. I mean, the truth is, you can assemble four or five science teachers for what it costs <laughs> to have a computer. My son is actually addicted to computers, which is another reason that I absolutely hate them. He, I mean, it's a real live addiction. If I 
tell him he can't use it, he has a fit. If I let him use it and then, and then make him get off, he has a fit. And I mean holes in the wall, broken things, terrible, awful, awful fits. And uh, somebody gave me a book called The Explosive Child. Um, <laughs> It's a book that was written by a therapist with a philosophy about how to talk to children like my son. Um, it's, uh, it's a way of dialoguing that teaches uh, empathy and problem solving. And each chapter in the book is a story of a different family that he has helped. And there is uh, actual sample dialogue in there. And I have tried to use it, but let me tell you that my son does not do his lines. <laughs> There's this one where there's this girl and uh, she's having a fit and she's yelling at her mother, you know, I want to go to Joey's house, I want to go to Joey's house. And she's kicking her and throwing things and the mother's hiding behind a chair and the kids are going, I want to go to Joey's house. And the mother says, I see you are upset. <laughs> that makes them feel heard. That's very important. And the kid says, I want to go to Joey's house, I want to go to Joey's house. And the mother says, I have a problem and I'm hoping you can help me solve it. And uh, uh, the kid says, I want to go to Joey's house, I want to go to Joey's house. And the mother says, if you go to Joey's house, then you won't get your homework done and then you'll get behind in school and you'll feel bad about yourself. And uh, the kid says, oh. Uh, and the mother says, could you help me with that? And she says, yeah, I could do some homework and then go to Jerry's house and then finish my homework. And the mother says, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I tried this with my son. He was yelling and screaming, I want to use a computer. I want to use a computer. So I said, you seem upset. And he said, no, duh, I'm upset. And, I, and, and then he says, I want to use a computer. I He's kicking me and throwing stuff, and I said, I understand you want to go to Joey's house. I have a problem, and I was hoping you could help me solve it. He said, what the hell's the matter with you, and who is Joey? No one can help you. It's not really working that well. That well, pass down, everybody. Paula. I'm going to sit. Hello, nice to see you. Sit down. So nice to see you. I, I'd it's like nice to, to talk see... to you longer, but I want to go to Joey's house. Uh... I want to go to Joey's house. I want to go... I'm sitting in the chair of your boss's wife. Yeah, Julie Chen is, is, is married to my boss. It was a very difficult time from when she comes here because I think, who do I piss off, him or her? <laughs> see, you don't know, do you? I can't even imagine being you in that situation. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can piss me off. <laughs> I bought you a treadmill. It bothered me at all. Hey, that would bother you because you're, you're, you're thin. It wouldn't bother thin. me at all. I would just put it right over with that steppy thingy I don't use. Is it one of those? Uh, no. Is that, that, that was... machine can actually make you gay if you're not gay, if you're a man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been proven. If you do that too often, you're like, this is fabulous. And then you're straight out of the door, up the street. Have there been studies? Yeah, I, yes, yeah, studies I've made up have proven this. <laughs> do you ever make that, do we, I do this with my kids, I, with my kids, I have one, but if I have more, I'm gonna do the same. Well, I will have more, because my wife's pregnant. It's a long story. Anyway, they, uh, <laughs> what I say to my son is, I, I say, no, this has been scientifically proven. And then he goes, oh, and he goes, to, I said, you, if you don't get this amount of sleep, oh. It's been scientifically proven. And Is that I, woo? Yeah, I go like that, woo. Scientifically proven, he believes it and he goes to bed. Wow. Do that with your kids. Wow. You, you know, you, you can't play with a computer. It'll make you put in whatever your son doesn't like. You know, what, that area. Uh, you know what? It's, he's impossible to deal with on this topic. No, it won't. And by the way, computer, a really fascinating thing happens in terms of science with my son because computer minutes are magically shorter than cello minutes. You're trying to get your son to play the if cello? Play, if, I tell him to play, if I tell him to practice his cello But the cello for 20 is the old-fashioned version of this machine. <laughs> if he plays the cello for 20 minutes, it's forever. It's, it was so long. It was and if I let him use the computer for 20 minutes, that was, it was so short. Isn't that amazing? There's computer no, 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 minutes no, no, no. and there's Let's cello get back minutes. to the cello. Why are you obsessed with having your kid play the cello? I don't care if he plays the cello or not. And by the way, I've said that before. Well, why but if he's going to take it in school and make me pay for lessons, then he has to practice. Is that... I are you go sure you have a no, kid? No, I want to go to Joey's house. How, no, how, old is your, how old is your kid? He's nine. Yeah, he's going to yeah. walk all over you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, what are we talking about here with your boy? Uh, he's 12. All oh, right. He's 12. Yeah. No, does your kid take an instrument? Yeah. What instrument? Tap dancing. <laughs> it's the instrument of my people. <laughs> no, he, do he doesn't actually. He's a he plays the guitar a little bit, you know, in a band. Every he's on the road right now, actually, so... Every, every, every time I have to get my kid to play the cello, all I can think is Yo-Yo Ma's mother must have been a damn saint. Yeah, where's that? Did you play an instrument when you were growing up? Yeah. What'd you play? Tap dancing? <laughs> I tapped my way right out of Scotland and right to Broadway, lady. No, what? Did, what did you play? You know, they made me play the uh, flute when I was in high school. They made you play the flute they when you were in high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrible. That's, that's, that's why made, I ended up what here. What do you mean they made you? <laughs> well, they made me play. How does somebody make a high school kid because play Because there was the only flute. ten clarinets. I wanted to play the clarinet, and I couldn't get it. There was only ten, and it was a, the, the school had 3,000 pupils, so I didn't get to play the clarinet. I got the damn flute. And, <laughs> and thanks for bringing it up, because it never uh -oh. says me to think about playing the, the flute. I didn't even like the flute. They made me play. It's a sideways. It's a sideways instrument. If a crab had a musical instrument, it would be the flute. This is a very important part of American history, by the way. That's this not is, a flute. That's a fife. That's a Revolutionary War band. We no, had no, that. that's a fife. A fife was was a, the flute. You, the flute was on for miles. You need an extension on your arm. You need to be Tony Robbins to get out to some of those notes out there. This is very, this is very historic. You should have learned. You didn't you know that for your uh, test when you became an American citizen? Yes, I did. That's why I'm telling you, it's a fife. The fife? You don't play the fife like that. Some that's a some woodland creatures do. <laughs> woodland creatures. I'll hide my nuts for the winter. <laughs> no, hide them all year round. Right. Uh, hey. Yeah. No, it's. And you play, for the Revolutionary War band, they had the fife and the drums, and they got and they were injured during the war. Right. Well, that's remember that they were bandaged up. Didn't you read about any of this? Yes, like, yes, of course I did. Guys like this here, and you could barely play. There's not yes. a lot of questions about the band when you become an American citizen. <laughs> they don't say, right, let's go on to the important stuff. Who was in the band and what did they play? I mean, that's not part of the test. No, we, if you you don't have to know who, you just have to know what they played. I Dude, and they, musket, fife, and drum. They, and, not, and then a musket's not a musical musket instrument. musket, for heaven's sakes. At the end, they go, da 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 <laughs> would have been... Yeah. Imagine being a, kid, a parent trying to get your kid to practice the musket. Oh, that'd be easy. Yeah. That'd be easy. Yeah, I, I blew my arm off the last time. <laughs> get in there and practice you your practice musket. You practice your musket or it'll be tap dancing. <laughs> we're out of time. We're, we're completely out of time. We're, uh, yeah, no, we're done. Is it, okay, the commercial's got to start. All yeah, right. yeah. They gotta, uh, you want to stay and watch them? They're riveting. The last one, you were absolutely right about it. It was the best one I've ever best seen. Of, well, best so far, but check these ones out. They're awesome. Oh, Paul Poundstone, everybody. Where we're at. Please welcome the adorable and funny Paula Poundstone, everybody. to be here tonight on this night when all of us could be a part of seeing a Craig Ferguson virtually throw himself at NBC. <laughs> I thought you had to watch cable to see that kind of a come on. That was unbelievable. <laughs> oh yeah, NBC's going to let you drink out of your little snaky cup. <laughs> The first thing that happens when you get on NBC is they take away your little snaky cup. I've seen it happen. It is, it is so nice to be here. And uh, I'm not just saying that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of performers, frankly, do just say that. They say it's 
<laughs> you know, they'll say, like, it's nice to be here. And they say it uh, because they don't really know what else to say, frankly. Uh, but, you know, let's face it. There's a lot of rich and famous people on this show. And honestly, and this is no disrespect to Craig, but there's better places they could be. <laughs> Not NBC. <laughs> For me, for me, this is uh, very, very, very nice. I mean, I, okay, one time I was on the show and Michelle Pfeiffer was on. Tell me there's not a better place for Michelle Pfeiffer to be. <laughs> but I'm not like that. What I'm telling you is that for me, it's very, very nice. I have two teenage daughters and a preteen son and 13 cats. <laughs> it is so nice to be here. nice to be anywhere that I don't have to sift litter or hear one syllable words turned into two syllable words. <laughs> Mom, I will. And I think my all time favorite, which flew right out of my head right now, we just finished a two week holiday break. And uh, my cats broke their all time vomit record. <laughs> kitten who would just sit in the Christmas tree and eat pine needles. <laughs> and that, combined with the traditional ribbon eating, allowed them to just smash last year's record altogether. <laughs> it's become a beautiful part of our holiday tradition. <laughs> I'm dreaming. Christmas was nice, but it is a dicey time of year because the, the expectations are high. And uh, even Santa Claus gave us games. And uh, even, even the picture on the box of the games suggests that you're going to have a far greater time playing it than you could possibly have. <laughs> we, we, we don't play it like the people on the box. <laughs> There's always a dad who's a good sport loser. He's obviously done something bad, and then he goes... <laughs> They never show people like this. They never show anybody flipping the board in a rage. <laughs> or getting one of the playing tokens stuck up their nose. Where's the shoe? Who has the shoe? <laughs> they don't play like that. Did you hear that there was, uh, by the way, did they not start playing Christmas music way, way, way too early this year? <laughs> by the time, by, by by the end of November, they had played out the traditional Burl Ives, Bing Crosby's, and they'd moved to the less than classic uh, Katie Couric's Hip Hop Christmas. <laughs> Not nearly as nice. Did you hear that they, uh, at the White House uh, state dinner, it turns out that there was another, uh, what do they call those, party crasher? That when they looked more carefully at the photos, they actually saw shrubs with feet. <laughs> like the hidden picture thing in Highlights Magazine. <laughs> the first lady had a toothbrush in her hair and there was a fish in the president's hand. <laughs> and scissors in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> no, I, I saw the stage guy held up a one minute sign. A second, is, was the minute? And then? Did it? The 30. Are we at 30 now? Did you already hold up the 30? Actually, you're <laughs> What does it say, rap? <laughs> I just, when, that, that guy doesn't work here. <laughs> Why are you, who the hell are you? He's just been telling me stuff. What did you do? I didn't, that guy wasn't here when Wavy was here. Yeah, who the hell talking. are you? You're from NBC, aren't you? Come on over and sit down. Well, 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 well. Hi, baby. Hey. Come on now. You hold on to that little buddy. No, come on. NBC will be fine with me. I'm just kidding them. I don't think they're really slimy bastards. No. No. Oh, wait, I do. I do. I do. Sorry, I lied. I actually do. When I sign my contract, because you sign, they come into the, the dressing room just before you go on. They have you sign your contract. And so I quickly wrote up in the corner for airing at 1235. Very wise. Very wise. Get the time slot in there. I don't know if anybody wins when this kind of thing happens. No, not you when it gets ugly like this. Do you, do you know what I think, though? I think that You're show winning. business people are like carnies. 
We're like carnies. What, carnies? Yeah, carnies with good teeth. What? Oh, you mean like carnival workers? Yeah, is like that what carnival, you meant? like carnival workers. What is that? What do you think I meant? Well, carnies. I, you like... know, honestly, when you were talking about bullies earlier, yeah. I kept wondering why you would be afraid of a Billy. <laughs> But yeah, you realized it it's, was Billy. It took me a little while, but then I did. Yeah, because in context, I understood it. But then it made me wonder about the Spanish thing. I'm trying to learn Spanish. I really admire that, but I'm just wondering if there's going to be some... Habla Espanol? Uh, si, sí, muy pequeño. But if there's going to be some accent... I have no idea what she said, everyone. Don't worry. Well, yeah, there's going to be an accent if I learn to speak Spanish, of course. Uh, but are you going to have some accent problems? Maybe. I don't know. I can't understand if I'm uh, if I'm causing a problem yet because when people speak Spanish to me, I don't know what they're saying. Now, what was the armpit word? Uh, Trum... Trumble day. What is it? You got it? Uh, Did you get it? Yeah. Sobaco. Sobaco, yeah. Sobaco. Yeah, so yeah. you don't actually know this man. Are you going to bring him with you everywhere you go? Yeah. Look, here's the real deal. He wanted to go to Spain. I said I'd take him. I can't take him. He can't even speak Spanish. He's on a headset to a Spanish-speaking expert who's hidden somewhere in the building. I figured that the whole... Because we were trying to figure out, like, why would he want to learn Spanish? What's the point of learning Spanish? And then I realized it's all this network shakeup. And who's on top? Telemundo! Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You are covering your little sneaky uh, cup right I, down the I'll road. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm sneaky. Yeah, you, sneaky. Might, you might want to use like an armadillo cup. Well, you can get snakes in Spain. Where did you get that cup? Why do you have that cup? This is actually from the Albuquerque Rattlesnake Museum. It was given to me by my friend Mary. <laughs> That's true. Well, My friend Mary was on the show and she said, oh, I got you a cup. I was in Albuquerque and I got you this cup. And I, I said, oh, that's pleasant. And I now use it. <laughs> it's very normal. People give each other presents all the time. I got, I got another cup here from Mila Kunis, also a favorite, uh, a favorite of mine. Who okay. yeah. gave uh, And she made this at Color Me Mine. Oh, that is, that is that, nice. Now, I'm yeah, guessing, nice. knowing you, you prefer this cup to this cup. Absolutely not. Oh, really? No. I, uh... Even though it's got an ass, this cup? <laughs> it's, either, it's either got a, a, an ass or it's being followed by a child's drawing of a bird. It's nice. Yeah. How would you say ass in Espanol? Aso. <laughs> That's a pretty good guess, though, you, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Who gave you the hand sanitizer? That's oh, a nice uh, gift. Howie Mandel. Your friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna give. It, I was gonna guess it was Wavy. No, no, Wavy's. I wasn't going to bring the crocodile back, but then I thought, well, everyone else in TV lies. I'll do it too. No, he was. He was great, and they do lie in TV. They do. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because so many of the shows are about you know like the court shows and the honesty and the you know, but yeah, it's no. all it's nasty. Yeah, it's a bad business. Yeah. Still, it's better than a real job. Well, you yeah. wouldn't get this. Yeah, you, you don't get you the, there's, no, you them's get, the perks for you right there. That's exactly right. <laughs> We're way out of time, yeah. Paula. You're, you're, you're working in a factory somewhere. You don't get those little... Yeah, they don't say, all right, everybody, production's up. Here's your ass cup. <laughs> We're way out of time, yeah, no, What do you mean we're out of time? We're out of time. Unless the guy comes right over to me with the rapid sign, I don't quit. All right, then, get over here. There you go. All right, must wrap. All right, we must wrap. We'll be right back, everybody. Uh, she's there, uh, Paula's there on uh, June the 19th at the Red Bank, New Jersey. Her name, of course, is Paula Poundstone, everybody. Paula Poundstone. I said, please try and wear something red. Well, and I ran out. Yeah, you, you kept... Well, I, to be fair, you thought you were doing the stand-up comedy tonight. I thought I was doing... I killed. 
Yeah, no, you were great. No, I, wow. I just, I heard you were doing the stand-up comedy, and I thought, well, I know you, and I wouldn't, I haven't seen you for a while, and I like to talk to you. I thought, well, I, it's lovely that you do stand-up, but why not just come straight out and talk to me? But what stand-up were you going to do? Just run it, run it by me quickly, in case it was good. Well, <laughs> I was hoping that your, your desk was going to be over there, and you, you'd basically be out of the room, because a lot of it was about you. <laughs> Yeah, really? It's going gonna... to feel—it's going to feel awkward now. Well, I. Uh, why would you do stand up about me? No, it's something I've been doing on the road. It's not. Don't worry about it. Is it about me and Antonio Banderas? It's a. It's uh, a little bit. It's more about him. All right. Okay. Have you ever been to Spain? No, I've never been to Spain. You should but go. But who on earth could sleep for half an hour? It's not really about sleep, it's about Tweety Box. <laughs> I, I heard you say that, and uh, I'm not sure that I'm as into the, the names of the private parts as you Well, you don't, you don't think friendly, attractive, kind of cheerful names for private parts is a better way to go than rude-sounding, ugly names? Well, I think when you mentioned your barbecue-sized Pringle Box... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's from that stand-up you I were doing just, about me, wasn't it? I just, I, yeah, I felt awkward. By the way, when you do the emails, yeah. when you do the emails and you hold the thing up, like, you hold it up as mm. if you're going to show people yeah. the email, and then you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet you told Antonio that you try to be honest. Do you see what I'm saying? That's like a I try to be honest. I didn't say I actually achieve honesty. I said I try to be honest. And that is symbolic of that. It's my attempt to be honest, and then, no, no, I can't be. Yeah. Did, sort of. Uh, were, were you, did you do a lot of therapy? Because <laughs> I, 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 I am in therapy right now. No, I didn't mean... Right, no, right now, with I you. Mean, You're my therapy. Yeah, you know what? Our time is up. No. Uh, <laughs> Get your calendar do you, do you get, th do you get therapy? To... I get. I, I did. I did for, for many years. Oh, you're and better now? You're cured? I, I'm great. I, uh, no, actually, you know what? I'll tell you something. Yes. Maybe this is the wrong thing to say to a guy who's in therapy. Um, but uh, I, would, I would kill to have that time and money back. <laughs> tell me more. Well, I'll tell you something. <laughs> I, I, no, I just think, I think we are big giant bags of chemicals that walk down the street and it's a matter of just sort of balancing that somewhere and a lot of times it's really not, uh, certainly not about dreams and not about your mother and I just think that, I'll give you an example, uh, I was uh, Have back... Have you been talking to my therapist by the way? <laughs> All right. she, she comes to a lot of my shows, <laughs> right. and so she's heard the stuff I right, do about right, you. Right, right, right. Uh, I, w okay, I was backpacking with my, my, my daughter, Allie, and uh, we were up at Mount San Jacinto, and... Uh, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. <laughs> so, uh, muy pequeño. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Tootsie Fruitsie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were, uh, and, and, and we both got dehydrated and we had altitude sickness. Uh -oh. And I felt um, really bad. I mean, it felt like unhappy right. uh, for a, a, a brief amount of time. But I just, I could feel my emotions sinking like a rock. And when later we discovered, oh, we, you know what? Drink water and come down low. Yes, you, you I know, understand. It's not I, as complicated no, 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 as I, hours and hours yes, of Yes, no, no. It, I mean, saying? I understand that. There that's is, why you, you're hydrating yes, now. Yes, that's why I stay. I, that's why I drink, and we record the show, you know, at sea level, but slightly above sea level. <laughs> no, I, I think that's true. Yes. But I think there's also other things as well. I mean, you can't just say it's not just that. I no, mean, it, it's not it just is, chemicals. It is just No, that. no, yeah. no. You're, no, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater there. There's, there's, there's... You know what? That what? happened to me once. You actually threw a baby out with bathwater? No, I was thrown out with ba bathwater. You were a baby? When I was out? a baby. Oh, and boy, has that affected me. See? See? It never occurred to me that it would come up tonight, but... Right. I, I just had a breakthrough, honest to God. Yeah. Well... Luckily, we were at sea level. I want, I want to thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was... So you stopped therapy because you think it's all about chemicals? No. I stopped therapy. So you were... I stopped therapy because I ran out of time and money. Yeah, well, there was that. Uh, there but was later that. I discovered it was, that it was really all about chemicals. Yeah. You get more sleep, you, you feel better. Look yeah, how happy the Spanish are. <laughs> 
Do you see how happy yes. Antonio Banderas is? Yes. And he was, he was a happy little fellow. He's in his t-shirt and jeans. Don't call him a happy little he fellow. A, he was a happy He's little fellow. He's Antonio Banderas. He's not a happy little fellow. He was a He's happy a little sex fellow. god. No. He, look at him. He was in his t-shirt and jeans. He had just come from a little play group. He was adorable. <laughs> Knock it off. He's a happy little fellow. All right. What makes you think he's a sex god? Did, is, well, is did that... you hear the accent? He was like, Craig, I was talking to you. And then he was doing all that thing. And he goes, the applause, it makes them very the flip of the channel. They want to stay. I'm like, oh. And all of that was sexual to you? Yeah. <laughs> but that's, to be fair, because of the chemicals in my body. I was about to say. I got you a got, lot of chemicals you, in my body. You got to balance that. You got to balance that out. Yeah, you got. You, yeah, you got, you're supposed to be physically active. Like, what do you do before you come to work? What What do you do? Because you have to be in a. <laughs> you nap. Yeah, nap, and then during the commercial breaks, nap, and then when I go home, Tweety Box nap. <laughs> you know. You know what you do, uh, which a lot of talk show hosts don't do, and I've been around, I know this, uh, which is you talk like right, you go like right up to the camera right. like that, yeah. and then you're really talking to the people at home I am. that I'm are watching right you. And it reminds me of, <laughs> it reminds me of Romper Room when I was a kid. It was a, it was a kid's show. Did you, do, you didn't, no, because they don't have that. In, I was thrown in, out with the bathroom, right? Scotland. I never saw it. <laughs> Yeah, they, okay, it was a kid's show, and we had, it was, it, there were local shows, uh, so different people had different romper rooms. Uh, ours, we had Miss Jean, and Miss Jean would take this mirror, and she would say that she was, it was magic mirror, she would say, yeah. and then she would s say that she could see us at home watching. And she would say, I see, you know, Janie, I see Susie. Oh, Bobby, is, watch is, where you're eating your toast. That's creepy. <laughs> well, it's kind of like you talking into the camera like that. So you say, I'm, you, you actually, give this illusion that you're actually talking directly to the people on the other side of the camera. And as a viewer, <laughs> as a, I'm just saying, as a viewer, it has made me feel watched. <laughs> And a lot of times after I have that feeling, I quickly drink some water. And get to sea exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah, I absolutely. try to, I well, try we're, to we're hydrate. Out of time. We're out of time. We're out of time? We're out of time. Okay. Well, can I come back next week? <laughs> but we got it. We got. We can buy. We got after you want. We can buy. We Why are you? You, you know, you should come and do the emails with me. I want to do the emails. Well, well, I, I would like to do email validation. I would like to be the person who holds it up the camera because you don't do it good. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're gonna mess what with the, the, what kind of validation is? You should be a lawyer. Exhibit A, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloody knife, isn't it? It's creepy, isn't it? People are watching at home right now, and you're watching them. That's the uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> you're watching. You're watching Tweety Box right now, aren't you? I'm just watching the camera, but I'm thinking Tweety Box. <laughs> then again, I'm pretty much always thinking Tweety Box. We we we, we gotta we we're really out of time. We gotta go. But right. I mean, help me out here. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Oh, anytime. Jeff? What the hell is that? <laughs> they thought they could play us off. It's not that I got a Oscar. <laughs> I'd like to thank my agent. Da, 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 da. That is, that is not, that is absolutely disrespectful. Disrespectful. We do have to go though. Pop <laughs> on everybody. We're right. Yeah. Right. Everybody. My next guest is a wonderful comedian. I love her. She's at the Keswick Theatre in Glenside, Pennsylvania on March the 11th. I've played there and it's a great theatre. 
Not when I'm in it. <laughs> but it is when she's in it. Please welcome the brilliant Paula Poundstone, everybody. Paula Poundstone. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It is so nice to be here, but we don't have time to talk about that. The pressure on this show for time is unbelievable. <laughs> Like, Aaron came off, and I said, I didn't hear the snake story. Could you go back and tell it again? And they're like, no, no, we can't. And they told me that I, ha I have, th they hoped that I would do three minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> like, I have the slightest idea what three minutes and 45 seconds is. I have no idea. And now that I mentioned Aaron's snake story, that's, I probably got three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, did you see the Academy Awards? Because they were very pushy with time there. <laughs> they, nobody could thank anybody. Nobody could do anything. They were just like, take the thing. Get, here's your trophy. Get off. Get off. It was all, it was all about the time. It was very, a lot of pressure. And by the way, some of those people have had a little bit of work done. Did you notice that? <laughs> Some of those people look like big birds flying into a really strong wind. <laughs> so we try, wait, you, normally we don't watch television at home, but I, except for this, but I, uh, uh, which we tape and then watch all day long over and over. It's a loop, we have it on a loop. Uh, you know, I noticed, by the way, somebody wrote and asked you, Craig, what were your favorite comic, who was the best comic, and you listed three, and I'm assuming you were doing it alphabetically and you just didn't get to the P's yet, but, uh, what a statesman. Uh, uh, so, all right, so anyway, so we're watching the Academy Awards, and my daughter, her phone rings, it goes, she has a cell phone, you know, and it goes, and she picks it up, and, uh, does this into it and then puts it down again. And I thought, well, great, it's over. Whatever it was, it's over. And then it goes, and she did it again. And I realized, I never knew this, that's texting. I didn't know what texting was. She was texting. That's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my entire life. I mean, if phones hadn't been invented yet, I would say it's brilliant. <laughs> like in a phone it would be like bring bring hello click <laughs> bring bring good and you click <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my entire life but they were very pressured for time on that show just like comics never get any time we get like a couple of minutes and then off now I was, I was driving on a, a road the other day and I went by one of those kind of men's nooner bars the girls 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 kind of places <laughs> And they had a sign up that said, continuous entertainment. Boy, I am not jealous of that, though. <laughs> How hard would that be? Just, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh my, this is so much easier. <laughs> You know what, I'll tell you something. I, I, uh, you know what I am jealous of is uh, Joan of Arc. <laughs> not, the, not, not the steak part, but she had a confessor. I love that. She, could call, she traveled with a confessor. She could wave the guy over, say what she needed to say, unburden herself, and then... I would kill to have a confessor. Just somebody that during your day you just go... <laughs> I ate Pop-Tarts in bed last night. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you very, very much. Paula, you are, of course... Continuous entertainment. Continuous entertainment, and you are... I have to say, I had not gotten to the peas yet. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. I, I mentioned, I was just... Uh, you talking. weren't to the peas yet, yeah. and, and uh, apparently you're starting with the W's. Who did I start with? Robin Williams. Well, I started with... Well, Robin's by the way. sensitive. He is. He's sensitive. He's very sensitive. If you don't and he's a brilliant, brilliant he man. would be upset. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, um... Yeah. Yeah. Who's he's, the funniest he's person? He's probably on tomorrow night, too. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Who is on tomorrow night? No, we don't really tell you plan that far in advance, really. I'll tell you something, not me after that kind of a slight. Why? I did, I did, no, I'm I, kidding. I'm, no, I'm absolutely kidding. By the way, how many times have I invited you to ping pong parties now and you've blown me off? Well, Every I've... single time. Okay, I'll come to the next one. When's the next one then? Tomorrow night. <laughs> To, to for Tom Gray. for Grace is on tomorrow Yeah, he's night. great at ping pong. I mean, oh. People, he's the ping pong champion of that show that he was on. <laughs> is that show? He's in movies. He's, yeah, that movie he was in. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was in Volcano. He was that the was guy. It. He was playing yeah. ping pong in the yeah. lava. Yeah, yeah. Was going yeah. Snake was curled yeah, up on his that shoe was, with That was paddle. quite the story, Aaron told. I was I on missed, the edge of I'm, my seat. I'm, Where are you? I missed the whole story. No, that was the whole story. No, I didn't hear. No, I t I, they put a mic on me, and then I came back, and the and the snake story was. Over no, well, with. what happened? Well, let me just run it by you quickly again. But I loved Aaron Eckert. Was so he's great. He was great, he's and he was nice. in. He was in the dark night. The bat. He was the, the Batman he movie was the and uh, Two Face, and so I was so nervous to meet him no, tonight because no, no, I knew no, I was going to be staring at one part of his face. <laughs> Yeah, he no, was no, two Tommy Lee Jones was a two feet. Tommy Lee Jones uh, was in The Fugitive. Yeah. You don't, you don't just get one movie. You can be in more than one movie, unless you're me. But the, uh, one movie. No, he, no, he was not in. Tommy Lee Jones was two feet. He was like, ah, 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 like that. Uh, Aaron no, played. Um, you did drugs with Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Nobody does drugs with Tommy Lee Jones. He's too angry. He does them all himself, and he oh, doesn't does even he? let you come into the room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but that's when you saw the. Yeah. yeah. The thing is about Tommy Which, Lee by the Jones way, is. Try that to put the baby to sleep. I'll, at this point, I'll try anything. If it's got a shot, I'll do it. They, they love that. No, I don't know, man. I, I'm really running on empty right now. Really, honestly. Because you, because you have a, you have a young child and then a baby. Yeah, yeah, well... The, I gotta it, tell you something. Just, you, what do you got, three hours? Is that what I heard? You got three hours sleep last night? Yeah, yeah. You just wait. <laughs> you just what? wait. What? Yeah. I would kill to get three hours sleep. How many kids When you your got? kids get older, three hours sleep is a luxury. Why, why? That doesn't make any sense at all. Didn't you just say, go to your room and now I'm going to take a nap and stuff? <laughs> why not? <laughs> I, who do I complain to about this? This I, is not what I... This is, this is the opposite of what I had in mind. No. It's what? not like that at all. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Do you the, hate me no, so there's, much? There's homework. I know. I, I homework, can't remember yeah, if I told yeah. you guys this the last time I was here, but I'm going to tell you. I, I just it bears repeating. Mm. I'm going to give you one of the best parenting tips you'll ever get in your entire life. What? Okay. In order to avoid the poster project, which your kid is bound to have. Been there already. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. This is how you avoid it. Go out maybe in August and buy a stack of poster. Put it visibly, show your kid, poster, put it up in the closet. They will never have a poster project the entire, it's like a talisman. You can even kind of shake it around the house a little bit. Oh, they like sage never, or something they like will that? Right, they will never get a poster project. However, if you do not whoa, do whoa. that. Yeah. No, no, that's two things you did. First you did that one like that, and then you did that one like that. That's two acting things. Yeah. Were oh, you a I'm a gifted, I was in Volcano. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, I was part of the lava. <laughs> I was spewed out. Oh, come on. Did you really, wait, did you, okay, is it really a movie volcano? Yeah, yeah. And what happens is that Tommy Lee Jones, he's like, ah, ah, it's a volcano, it's a volcano. And somebody else is in it, who else is Andy Dick. And he's, uh, he's like, oh, volcano. Uh, and then, <laughs> that wasn't bad. I've never tried Andy no, Dick that before. Was, that was, was all right, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Okay, Frank, a volcano. I, I gotta tell you, it has shades of many other characters that you do. Pretty much, they're all the same. Yeah. You know, they kind of go all like that, except Andy Michael King, because he doesn't. You know, I mean. No, he's well, not like that. No, who's he's Andy, more like that. Who's Andy Dick? Andy Dick. What's wrong with you? He's the one the kids go nuts for. Andy Dick. Andy Dick. They, you, that's who the kid, the comic, the kids are. I, I don't know. Oh no. <laughs> Don't know him. So no, he's no, he... on your list before me also. No, no, Paula. You Probably are the funniest person I've ever met. Thank you very much. With a P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to take Andy, a break. We, what uh, do you mean we have to take well, a break? We, it's, you know, it's just one of these things we do in television. Like every now and again, we show commercials for something so that somebody can get paid. Obviously not me, but somebody. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. Andy Dick. Well, do you want... 
Does <laughs> Andy Dick get paid for this show? You get, every single time you go to a commercial, this is sort of like Zuzu's pedals and the angel's wings. Every time. <laughs> See, now that's three. You did that voice like that. <laughs> and you did the one like that. And then you did that one Do you know like what, that. Do you know what I'm referring to when no. I say those things? No, but I'm trying to look smarter than I am. Okay. <laughs> By the way, you used the word homage before. In the earlier part of the show, when you Does were I? talking about the, the movie, the Johnny Depp animated film, yeah. you used the word homage. Did I use the word homage? Yeah, he did, didn't he? He said homage. Yeah, well, I, I meant to say homage. <laughs> That's more like oh, it. Huh? I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, I, I still, there's still bits of Europe floating around I me, you know? Very Impressive. Thank you're, you you kind of keep us Americans on our toes a little bit. Hey, I'm an American kind of too. Got my tattoo. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll take a break. And There's then a place in Beverly Hills called Dr. Tat Off, and they can get that right. I don't want it off. I don't want my tats off. Tats off. <laughs> you keep your yeah, tats off. Yeah, I see. And there's another one. There's another one. Now you're doing that one. And you've done that one. And you've done that yeah. one. Keep your tats on. Keep... <laughs> All right, well, look, I'm going to play some commercials. Just stay there. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059 or visit oneiota.com. the show before. Was that the alien cat? No. Uh, the, uh, welcome back everybody. Um, so I just was told that uh, Aaron Eckhart was Two-Face. I knew that. I feel such a fool. I know. It could have happened to anybody. No, it could only are happen you, to people that were foolish enough not to know. Are you sure that he was in Volcano? <laughs> what I'm if not that? sure that he wasn't. I, uh, I, I think, I no, he wasn't. Definitely not. No. Tommy Lee Jones in that one. In, yeah. Didn't Tommy Lee Jones you have like a thing for Tommy Lee Jones. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, earlier he said he was an Annie. I don't think I, he's I, in. I never said he was an Annie, didn't he? But he did play Daddy Warbuck. <laughs> he did. He and Annie, he did a two-face thing in that. <laughs> the sun will be on tomorrow night. night. <sighs> We're out of time, you know. Oh, jeez. I mean, the whole show is out of time. Yeah. Well, that's how it is. That's a get your award and get a say hi to Craig and get off. <laughs> That's You've exactly taken up what? almost half the show. Yeah, but you know what? Did I take up almost half the show? Almost half the show. <laughs> yeah, it, you, it, the show is mostly you and Aaron's uh, rattlesnake story. <laughs> Which I never heard. Bring him back on to finish telling the rattlesnakes. What did he say happened? R rattlesnake was on his foot and that was it. <laughs> you look... You know, Boy, they put that microphone on me fast. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think when you look like Aaron, who gives a rat's ass if you got a good story? You know? He's a pretty guy. handsome dude. He's, ve handsome he's dude. very handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. I, yeah, I would yeah. have to agree there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even, even when he was Two-Faced, which was supposed to be a scary character, even when he put, he had like part of his face eaten away. The other part of his Zion face was good looking. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Say good night. Good, good night, 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 night. Yeah, good night. All right, please state your name and occupation for the folks at home. Uh, my name is Paul Poundstone, and uh, I'm the... You're the robot tonight. The you're voice. going to be the personality and voice of the robot this evening. That's what you're going to do. I'm the voice of Jeff the robot. Jeff the robot, yeah. And what the you do? personality. Yes, what you do is we, you go backstage to a pod where you'll be encased in a pod and your, your mind and body will be taken from you, much in the same way as you, you know, when you take drugs, uh, <laughs> which of course you clearly have a problem with. And then, and then... And then your personality will be put inside the robot for the, you know, the length of the show this evening f for hilarious antics to ensue. This is, <laughs> this is not what they told me. They didn't tell me anything about a pod or uh, any kind of uh, my... So what happens again? No. The, <laughs> well, who are they, Paula? Uh, the, I think I spoke with the producer. Someone called, <laughs> someone called my house and said that they worked for you. Oh, yes, the Nigerian prince. Yes. <laughs> and I sent money right away. You gotta send the money right away. And that's to you folks at home. If you receive an email asking, you know, for money from a Nigerian prince, get that money off there. <laughs>
I, I've just winded them up. You, they shouldn't do that. Yeah, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I almost did the, I, I almost did the friend stuck in the London airport thing. Did you get that one? No. Yeah, there's one where somebody that knows you supposedly writes and says they're stuck in the London airport and they need money and they have like a good reason. And I almost did it. And it turned out it wasn't real. Is this the kind of... <laughs> is this the kind of hilarious... Crikey. You're going to be doing in the robot? <laughs> Telling you a true story. Well, that's great if it's we were no doing a I can have a documentary. <laughs> it's no Chicken Margaret. Not everyone's going to be don't, able to do don't, Chicken don't Margaret. Don't mention Chicken Margaret. I haven't talked about that yet. <laughs> this is, I do a linear show. I yeah, linear well. Show. Well, that's not how we do things here. I do a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> Good night, everybody! Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. What do you think of that story, giant bouffant hair Jeff, tonight? That was a very, very moving story, Craig. <laughs> You mean it was a very, very moving story? You were upset by the story of Chicken Margaret? That it reminded me of a time when I was not flush and I shoved some nail clippers up my skirt. <laughs> well, I hope you know where the hell this is going because I don't and I'm not going to help you. What happened then? It was, it was in order to steal the nail clippers. I see. No one would look there. <laughs> Clipper isn't really a big ticket item, and a frozen chicken can run a few bucks. But I said clipper... I was not flush, <laughs> all Jeff. Right, all right. <laughs> look at my nails, for God's sake. Well, look, could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, no one's asking you to go for a manicure. I mean, look, if I was down in my luck, <laughs> like this. <laughs> The last thing I'd think is, well, I've, I've got no money. Where am I going to get my nails done? You I mean, don't I... know the first thing about down on your luck, <laughs> fat cat. <laughs> how dare you? How, how dare you? How dare you? I, uh, while I have you know, I'm not a fat cat. I'm a dancing monkey for the CBS Corporation just like you. <laughs> now, introduce the commercials. Uh... Here comes a commercial that could save our economy. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the big show where tonight things are not as they seem. Yes, they are. They're exactly as they seem. <laughs> Very good. That's very nice. I like your hair. I think the, your hair choice tonight is very, um, what's that? Uh, stupid. <laughs> you can't see your mohawk. Your beehive's covering your mohawk. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I've had to say that to someone. <laughs> I, I, I went with what I felt tonight. I felt beehivey. There's something about you that makes me feel beehivey. <laughs> Are bees that, actually inside your hive? I, do you hear that little buzz, buzz sound? I thought I just had too much coffee. No, that's, that's the beehive. Uh, you're looking sartorially excellent as well. I don't know what that means. Robots have an excellent vocabulary. Oh, really? Is that why you used excellent twice in the same paragraph then? <laughs> they, also, they also jam. Jam? Jam, as in repeating. You don't want to have jam with all these bees around, you'll get infested. <laughs> no, they jam, as in repeating the same thing over and over because it's jammed. It's a machine, a robot. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know we were talking young people. <laughs> Is that what the young people are saying? Hey, we're going to jam? No. What up? 
Dog. <laughs> cat. That cat. No, the phrase is, what up, dog? <laughs> I'll bear it in mind. What, what, uh, what time is it? It is time for tweets and emails. <laughs> dog. <laughs> This is from Ashton. Ashton. <gasps> I wonder if it's Ashton. Gotcha. He tweets a lot. He does tweet a lot, and it is an email, which is very close to a tweet. Oh, oh yeah, it's an it's email. Well, he does that too. What, what, what? He does that too. He does. He emails and tweets. He knows all the ways to think. No. Ashton in Westchester, uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, that's him. That will be him. <laughs> Dear GP in the Ferns, I think my boyfriend... Uh-oh. Oh! Oh, 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 Ashton, I think you just made the news. Uh, I think my boyfriend might be cheating on me. I think it's a different Ashton. No, this is this no, is. No, I don't. No, it is. It's a different Ashton. I think my boyfriend might be cheating on me. Is there any way to find out if it's true without invading his privacy? No. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. You ever been cheated on there, Jeff? Uh, never. Never. People are. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Worth checking, worth finding out, worth knowing that uh, you're really helping. Uh, this is from David in Toronto, Canada. You ever been to Toronto, Canada? Got a Have I been there? to Toronto? Can I get a place there? I love to throw beads, go swimming, get naked. In Toronto? Really? Yeah, yeah. Love to do that in Toronto. Hmm? Well, that would explain your present condition. You ever been to Toronto? To Toronto? Me? I'm never out of the place. I go all the time. I tell you how often I've been to Toronto. I don't even call it Toronto. I pronounce it like locals say Toronto. I call it Toronto. <laughs> hey, we're in Toronto. Do you mean Toronto? No, I don't have time for teas. <laughs> Toronto. They just, run it, they just run it on through like that with no teas? Yeah, they just are Toronto. Just like that. That's how they say it. Toronto. Whoa. In fact, sometimes they don't even say that. They just go... Ah. <laughs> Welcome to Canada and the lovely town of... Ah! They're busy people. They're busy people. They're, they don't there. have time. They don't have time. Do you know what they say? Toronto is like New York run by the Swiss. <laughs> That's what they say it's like. That's what they say it's like. Well, when they have time. But they don't have time. They, what they just say is... Ah, Swiss. That's all they say. <laughs> anyway, David and... Oh! Uh, says, Dear Craig and Jeff, I'm about, be, uh, but, uh, but I'm about to begin... Yeah, he didn't say that. Yeah, no. <laughs> they said some of it. That's ridiculous. Well, you know, it was written by someone whose body temperature had been lowered a great deal by a frozen chicken that they had pressed again. <clears throat> I'm about to begin at university and I'm trying to pick up a major. Ha <laughs> ha! Any suggestions? Go to West Point. Ah, yeah. <laughs> See what I did? Yeah, see what I, did? I see what you did. I there's, turned it into a joke. Yeah. Like I, a real joke. There's two uses of the word major. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. I took the other word of the uh, major and I made it a homoerotic reference. Yeah. <laughs> you making some a homoerotic reference. Blow me away. <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> this is from <laughs> This is from Calvin in Surprise, Arizona. Is it Surprise, Arizona? Or Surprise, Arizona? <laughs> Bet you never heard that before. Uh, dear Craig and Jeff, a friend of mine has convinced me to hire her, but she's turning out to be a terrible employee. Should I fire her or just wait to see if she improves? <laughs> Are you waiting? I'm waiting to see if you improve. Yeah. You know, I put this hair on especially for you. Those kinds of comments. You know, us. Have you ever been to Surprise, Arizona? 
Wait, you want me to say that to you? No. Have you ever been to Surprise Air? I'm just, I'm asking oh, you. Oh, you asked me if I've ever been to have Surprise Air? Is, sur- like, is that like code? Is that I like get, a- you know, I couldn't have made it more clear what I was asking. <laughs> I thought it was some kind of, uh, you know, homoerotic double on You ever been surprised Arizona? As in, uh, you know, have you ever seen another man naked? That kind of thing. You, like, you know, when a man takes off his pants and goes, surprise Arizona! No one has ever taken off their pants and surprised all of Arizona. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Call me, Arizona. This is from Abigail in Fargo, North Dakota. You ever been in Fargo, North Dakota? I got a little place I like to go swimming, bake naked peach. You know. <laughs> <laughs> love, Dear love Craig. Fargo, North Dakota. What's love that? it. Love it. It's nice. It's a nice place. They got yeah. they, they made that film there. What was it called again? <laughs> Fargo? Yeah, it's a one. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, my best friend recently moved into my apartment while she looks for a new place to live, but she stopped looking and is getting pretty comfortable. Is there a nice way to get her apartment hunting again? Hmm, yeah, probably uh, ask her to make a, a video with you where you both make out with each other. How many times does that work for you? Every time. Every time. Boy, that surprised Arizona. <laughs> All right, we're going to get time for one more. One more and that's it. We're out of here, One right? more and that's it. One more and that's it. We're it. not. Time's up after all right. this well, one. Well, one more. We don't have time. We don't even have time for this one. Nope. So let's do it. All right. This is from Karen in Lake Forest, California. I don't know if you can tell from there, but Karen's a swan. Uh, uh, hey, Craig and Jeff. With Christmas just around the corner, what do you plan on asking Santa for this year? Uh, fingernail clippers. <laughs> Frozen chicken. We'll be right back, everybody. Forty-nine of the fifty states in America, and surprise, Arizona. <laughs> see what I did? Yeah, yeah. I see how you used. I that. used it. Didn't you I used that. I surprise, used Arizona. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I. You ever been to? Uh, oh my God! You scared the hell out of me, Arizona. <laughs> I'm kind of busy. Smaller. <laughs> We have to take a commercial check. break. Any ideas how we should get to it? We should ask her what to say. Is it he, Jeff, or is she? I haven't dared look, but the hair's nice. <laughs> She's got a set of nail clippers up her. Ay, caramba! Oh. <laughs> what the hell? He, look, look, come on. He, he's up. He's a kid. He doesn't understand. <laughs> There's nothing up there needs clipping, in my experience. <laughs> Jeff, get us to the commercial break. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this next commercial is going to get us out of the recession. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? That was the theme, you know, the, the there. You did great. She did good. Yeah, you did really good. Well done. Thank you very much, fat cat. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Ewan McGregor would like a go at winning the Golden Harmonica because he feels he's able to blow an organ better than anyone else. Let's just see. Let's just see how good he is. My next guest is a very funny comedian. <laughs> She's at the uh, Mardi Gras Casino in Hallandale Beach in Florida on October the 22nd. Please welcome the adorable and lively and lovely and delicious Paula Poundstone, everybody. <laughs> to be here. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, the anxiety I feel. I just, I was standing just around the corner. 
That's, I don't know if you've ever gone on a tour, but I, ju I was just around the corner, and the anxiety you feel while you watch the rest of the show, just wanting, you know, to be a part of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just wanting to be liked. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so wanting, to bond, wanting to bond. I'm going to tell you something. It, it's so nice to be here. See, that's the kind of thing you say when you want to bond. <laughs> it's, it's great to be here. To be here for one thing because I get to stay at home and I've been traveling a lot lately. I was just in Alaska. No way! No way! I'm gonna tell you something. I ordered a pizza. <laughs> I ordered a pizza and it was delivered by a Russian woman. All I could think was Sarah Palin must have stepped away from the windowsill for a couple of minutes there in the kitchen. Even though I heard she never actually said that. <laughs> Tina Fey must have stepped away from the kitchen for a couple of minutes. I mean, I try so hard to keep up with what's going on. Uh, you know, the Republican, yet another Republican, uh, what are they called? Debate. Uh, it's, it's, very hard to, it's very hard to follow the Republican field. It's like watching a front loading dryer. <laughs> It's, it's Romney, it's Bachman, it's Perry, it's Kane, it's a sock! Very hard to follow, I, I think. I, uh, it's hard to follow the news because there's so much junk news that gets in the way. That's, that's part of it. I, like, I was in the airport the other day and I saw, I saw a magazine with Princess Kate's picture on the cover and it said that she was exhausted. <laughs> and it listed the things that were exhausting her. The first one was grueling etiquette training. <laughs> How does that look? It's very nice to meet you. Again! <laughs> it's very nice to meet Again! <laughs> the second one was she's trying to get pregnant. Well, she should have seen that coming. <laughs> and if she thinks she's exhausted now, wait till she has kids. I bet your royal whining is a lot worse than regular kid whining. But I don't to be a figurehead. I want to have domain. <laughs> I was helping my kids, uh, with, one of my kids the other, I was helping her with fractions and uh, just, just, just grueling, absolutely grueling. I stumbled out of the room to tweet therapeutically <laughs> and I tweeted that I was helping my kid with fractions and somebody tweeted back to me. They said uh, they never used fractions in their adult life. Like as if I were burdening my daughter with some unnecessary education. I, I tweeted back to the guy. I, I said we're working on halves. <laughs> which I think she'll need for in the event of a messy divorce. <laughs> if there's a lawyer involved, she might need thirds. <laughs> I was a lousy student. I, I, I was a lousy student. I took, I took a Shakespeare class and didn't understand a word of it. And, and you know, we had these kind of books where there was the text of the play on one page and then an explanation on the other. And I still didn't understand it. And they're both in English. <laughs> We would, I, we would never do that to another country. I think that was just the British people getting back at us. <laughs> we would never make them study something they couldn't possibly understand. What do we give them? Elvis. <laughs> you ain't nothing that's nothing but or other than a hound dog. That's the kind of dog one might hunt a fox with. <laughs> crying, that's crying. All the time, constantly weeping. <laughs> Watch for it, here's the betrayal. You ain't never caught a rabbit. That means you have not caught a rabbit. So you ain't no friend of mine. Elvis wants his friend to catch a rabbit, but will his friend catch a rabbit? No, his friend will not catch a rabbit. And so Elvis will not be his friend.
back. Welcome back. I'm here with uh, Paula Poundstone. Yes, uh, Quest. Four different people that work on this show, four different people came over to me and said, Craig will walk over, because they skipped the commercial break, they said. Yeah. Because of the woman who doesn't really like pizza and is not, face it, <laughs> an American. Right, and, right, right. Uh, and they said, and they said he'll, he'll, he'll come over to you. That's what they said. Four different well, people. Well, look, 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 I look. stood there waiting. <laughs> Here's the thing, after if I go over there, <clears throat> I'm just going to have to come back here. And you're going to have to come back here anyway, so why don't you just come over here? Why do I have to walk over and come back here? It's because I'm an immigrant, isn't it? I'm an immigrant, and immigrants have to work twice as hard as native-born Americans. You can just walk over here, but oh no, I'm doing the job that native-born Americans don't want to do, which is walk over there and come back there. No, no, no. You refused to walk over, and now you're going to hire a trainer. <laughs> Why would Four I? Four different people said it to me. Four different people I, said, well, Craig's going to walk over. And I believe I presented to you. We've got some new interns. That, that may be it. <laughs> what was the phrase you used when you told no pokey? What was it you Jiggery said? Jiggery pokery. Jiggery pokery. Yes, it's every that phrase. That was so well put, I thought. <laughs> that I wonder, you know, uh, with the budget cutting and all the programs, my daughter volunteers at the Santa Monica Animal Shelter. Wow. And I, now, legally, they have to have the dogs and cats fixed before they can leave. But I was thinking... If they just brought you in to make your jiggery pokery speech. <laughs> or jiggery or we had the interns fixed and I wouldn't have to make the speech. Four different people. I presented to you when I first came on that I wanted to be liked, I wanted to fit in. I finished my set, there I stand, waiting for you to walk over. <laughs> well, I, look. Wait a minute. didn't come over there because I would just have to come back here. And what you probably don't know is I have an injured leg. <laughs> ah, you think I'm lying? Right, well I'm let me show wait you. Wait over here. Wait. <laughs> wait, come back. You ain't nothing but a house. You made me come over there with my injured leg. Oh, my God! It's a contusion of some sort. It looks like jiggery-pokery. Let's, let's not this, forget these. This is unbelievable. Yeah! Not Check these babies out. They're new! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, how do you like that now with your fancy ties? Huh? Right. Check this thing out. No, tell me, how did you injure your leg? Uh, I actually, I was at the kids' camp out and I banged into something, uh, a kid. Um, <laughs> weekend. Uh, you were at a kids' camp out? Kids' camp out, yeah. The, the, school, the school have a camp out. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, with the kids' oh, It's like Burning God. Man for little people. No, yeah. it's just with, yeah. the, with the camp out and the 40, it's, for, it's 40 dollars. Every time they go to do anything, it's $40. Have you noticed that? $40? 40? When's the last time you were at a kid's got $40? No, $40? You wouldn't, even get, you wouldn't even get half of your kid there for $40. Every time my kid, every morning I have to sign something. Every morning I have to sign a permission slip. Have you, have you do? I'm a parent. I'm I have to them. sign a permission yeah. slip every morning. And it's for stuff like I don't even understand. I said, didn't I sign this yesterday? Yeah. It's every day. And you're signing stuff. I don't even know. I signed one the other day that said that they were going on a trip and that if my kid was killed, I wouldn't be that upset about it. <laughs> Did you sign your uh, slip before you came out here tonight, by the way? You had to, I had to sign a thing before I came in here. That's right. I did have to sign a th Yeah, the thing that says, I don't have to walk over there and get you. <laughs> all right. Four different all people. All right, all right. What do you want? Mouth organ, awkward pause, big cash prize. I'd go for the cash prize. You've got a lot of kids. Uh, well, I could use the cash prize because there's a kid's camp out coming up. Right, there you are. Fifty single dollars. You right, asked, 50, uh, I think you should, by the way, include rat's ass, because I like that when you said I don't give a rat's ass. That could be a fourth choice. I can't put rat's ass, but I can put in kangaroo testicles. <laughs> Slightly smaller than regular kangaroo testicles because they've been to the North Pole. This They're is cool. my lucky day. No, you're not getting them. No. <laughs> but I'll give you a glittery ball. Okay. The backup one. <laughs> no, I'm not giving you eggs. It's a fifty dollars. Okay, That's enough. No. Okay. Take the fifty dollars. No. All right, um, let's see. I would have gotten the Barbie one wrong, by the way. Well, this one's a lot easier. 
Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Yes. Its capital city is Reykjavik. Within 100 years, when did the Parliament of Iceland first convene? <laughs> You're fine, it's within a hundred years. <laughs> um, within a hundred years, yeah. when did the Parliament first convene? Yeah, yeah, that's what I just said to you. Yeah. Barbie? Um, that actually... 930 AD! Yes. Nine. Yes. 930 AD. Yes. 930 AD is actually rhyming slang in Britain for Barbie. 930 yes. AD, Barbie. Yeah, when my kids were little, they always wanted a 930 AD doll. Go get yourself something, oh. Freddie. The lovely Paul Pines, everybody. We'll be right back. My next guest is one of the funniest comedians in the world. You always say that to annoy comedians, they hate it when you say that. They're like, oh, thanks, nothing to live up for. Anyway, live up for, live up to. I'm sorry, I've got shingles. Anyway, she's a very funny comedian. She's at the Warner Theatre in Torrington, Connecticut on August the 25th, which is any time now. Please welcome the lovely Paula Poundstone, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to be here. Things have been a little stressful at home. My son just had to have surgery. He's uh, going to foosball camp and uh, had to have the rod installed. <laughs> and uh, now he doesn't fit in the car and he knocks a lot of stuff over. You have to be so careful what activities you have your kids do nowadays. Uh, Congressman Morris from Indiana uh, says that the Girl Scouts have been subverted in the name of destroying family values. <laughs> I have no idea what activities they participate in, but I would love to see the badge. We a Girl Scout, we had a smile in our pocket. <laughs> Seems silly now. I, uh, you know, there's so many, so many difficult decisions that you make now as a family. My kids, for example, have decided to cremate me, and I am begging them to wait. <laughs> We've been, trying, we've been trying to get healthy. Our whole family's been trying to get healthy. I'm not serving them red meat anymore because I, I read a study. I don't know if you read this. Of course. I don't, I don't know if you read. I, uh... Because <laughs> you're busy. You do a lot of stuff. That's all. You do a lot of stuff. Right? <laughs> like right now. You're very, there you go. Yeah. He's reading a study right now. There, I read a study that said that uh, red meat significantly decreases your lifespan. And uh, uh, apparently it was done by cows, but I still feel <laughs> very important to keep my family healthy. I, I, I admit, I cheat here and there. I was on the airplane the other day reading the ingredients of my Reese's Pieces bag. And uh, I, the first ingredient, by the way, is sugar. And uh, the second ingredient in Reese's Pieces is uh, partially defatted peanuts. <laughs> Here's what I think happened. I think, I think the foreman went down to the peanut defatting department, and there was a guy down there, you know, doing Angry Birds or something. And the foreman said, did you defat the peanuts? And the guy said, um, partially. <laughs> And he said, well, put him in, put him in. I'll tell you something, I don't go to the, uh, I will not go through the, 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 you know, the, this one, the metal detector anymore, the get naked one. I won't do that one anymore because I read that it's more radiation than we are supposed to be having. And I'm at the airport a lot. And every time I tell them that I won't go through that thing, they act like, they go, you're going to get the pat down. <laughs> Like, it's a punishment you're going to get the pat down. I always go, I know. 
And then they do that lame old speech. You know, I come to sense of the area of your body and use a bag in my hand. They say that when they do the pat down. I come to sense of the area of your body and use a, use a bag in my hand for a sense of body of body. You know what I think is going to happen? I think eventually we're going to evolve and the back of the hand will become the most sensually receptive part of the body. I'm going to slide my hands up your, up your legs until I meet resistance. <laughs> it strikes me as odd. But anyway, I just, got, I just get distracted so easily nowadays. I, uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say to you. I'm, I, you know what? I'm, it's my, I don't know if it's my age or too much activity or too much study reading. But even driving, I'm totally distracted all the time. I can't, I, and there's too many buttons. I think that's part of the problem. When, uh, on my windshield wipers, there are 30 different <laughs> degrees of windshield wiping. I can never tell if it's off. Because there's one that just goes like this. <laughs> Every other Tuesday. I can't, I can't imagine what that's for. What? Why would you, that's for if somebody throws a chicken at your windshield. <laughs> the other day I'm driving on a perfectly sunny day and all of a sudden it just went like that. I said, that's right, somebody threw a chicken at my windshield about two weeks ago. Thank goodness I have that feature. You guys have been terrific, thank you so much. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to see you. It's nice to see you. I saw your socks. Oh, yeah. You like my socks? Your socks. These suggest uh, that you enjoy adventurous sex. I do. Let me show you something. You know what these say? Whoa. These say I don't want sex at all. Okay. Now, let me, let me see that. Let me see this. And uh, by the way, so far, so good. Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're going the right way about it. I, let me see those, uh, let me put, put that back up there a minute, will you? Is that, is that spats? <laughs> no, spats I think come up, I think spats are like an add-on. All right, but I they, these, they are, look this is, these are shoes. <laughs> shoes? Yes, yes, we wear them to protect our feet. <laughs> From what? <laughs> Many other of, other feet? No, many of it from from a probing the chicken, PSA. Remember, uh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, well, these are shoes. Uh, they're not spats. They're black and white, though, like spats. Yeah. They're like, would you mind if I started to call you spats? I wouldn't mind at all. It's, it's a pretty good name, right? It's a cool name. It's yeah. like a little. It's like a little pet name. It would be like our our special thing. <laughs> You don't really want to have a special Not thing. Not really, man. Yeah. I did, right I up until the time you showed me the socks. Then yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the special thing's a terrible idea. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. What? Every time you call me Paula, I'm going to know that in your heart you're saying spats. Well, I'm, I'm going to call you spats. I'm going to call you spats poundstone. It makes you, good makes you sound like a, like a gangster for the 1930s. Spats poundstone ran a place down by the waterfront. It does. Yeah, sort of. And you're wearing the pinstripe, so that's kind of like, all you need is a fedora and a gun, and you're there. I, you know what? When I, uh, did you see my gun? I, uh, when I was a kid, they just called me Poundstone. And that's not like a... Those bastards. And then they would hit me on the head. They'd go, Poundstone, Poundstone. Yeah, Steve Michaels and Tommy Haber every day of my life. Poundstone, Poundstone. I said, my, how clever. Surely you'll be writers. <laughs> They work on the show. That's weird. <laughs> they don't work on this show. No. If they could come up with gold like Poundstone, Poundstone, they'd be off working on a real TV show. No, oh, you know, I heard you're moving to a bigger studio. I am, yeah, yeah. Why? Because uh, I, I, I have power now. <laughs> It's like some sort of contractual wrangling. I don't understand. This is a great studio. No, no, it's not. This is a, this is a great... What is it? It's a great studio if you take still photographs in the 1930s. Then it's a great studio. That is what this is for. It is a stills photography studio. I don't understand what you need more space for. My giant sock collection. Uh, 
look at when I came out when when uh, the guy told me to come out. He said, "Okay, when you're done, walk over." Yeah. To Craig, he said because he probably won't get up and walk over. Oh to no, you. I don't like. And that. I thought, well, if that's too much for him, then why have a bigger studio? <laughs> I'm gonna get one of those things. You know the the things that the uh, overweight people use in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get one of them. You know the uh, the little jazzies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get one yeah. of them. I'll, I'll yeah. come right across the stage. A lot of those are paid for, by the way, with uh, you know. Uh, money? Money, but, you know, the, the government, government... Government money? Government money. A lot of those things. Yeah. You've, they, never, you've never ridden a motorbike, have you? What makes you say so? Because you go like that. When you do that, you don't rev a motorbike like that. You rev a motorbike like that. I'm Spats Poundstone, of course <laughs> I... You had the motorbike... Sp I love Spats Poundstone. That, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Can I be in your gang? <laughs> Yeah. Show sure, spatch. Yeah. I'm kind of talking like this, a little bit uh, Sean Connery. How'd you like it? A little it bit. Is, it is a little bit Sean A little bit Con Sean Connery. He's your fellow countryman, is he not? He, well, he lives in the Bahamas now. <laughs> you know when you go to With the Bahamas... With Romney's money? Yeah, sure. I, uh... Is he a Romney's Didn't he boy? have a... Didn't Romney have a... Piece of Sean Connery? Oh. Romney's not that, Reg. <laughs> No, talk, you know when you go. Talk about your investment strategy. <laughs> you know that, everything I got into Sean Connery. Put everything on Connery. <laughs> no, I. I gotta uh, make a phone call right now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I get to the phone. Uh, uh, it's right over there. When you have a bigger studio, you're never gonna reach it. <laughs> it's not connected to anything. People don't even use phones like this anymore. It's garbage, Paul. You know what? In our house, that would get a timeout. <laughs> It gets a commercial break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Sorry I threw the phone. <laughs> what else? Paula's name isn't pa Spats, it's Paula. <laughs> Sean Connery doesn't live in the Bahamas, except he does. <laughs> and, um, anything else? No, I, don't you say, like, who's coming up or something? Oh, for heaven's sake. Is that... It's no. the end of the show. Who's oh. coming up? Uh, boner no, pill I mean, commercial. No, I mean, on your... <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Please welcome the terrific Paula Poundstone, everybody. to be here. I'm always excited to be on the Craig Ferguson show. People call it Late Late Show, but I call it the Craig Ferguson show uh, because that's how I think of it. It's always very exciting to be here. I like to know who the other people are going to be on the show because it feels very show businessy uh, to be here. Frankly, who I really want to be on with, my favorite actor, is the guy from the Earwax Vacuum commercial. <laughs> You know the guy who's showing the dangers of using the cotton swab? And he goes, ow! Yeah, I love him. He's my favorite actor. He can, I would love to see him in some more challenging work. <laughs> to be or not to be. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or ow! God, I love him. I just saw um, on the BBC website that the UN is urging the world to eat insects. <laughs> that is not going to go over well in my home. <laughs> I have a 15-year-old son who gets mad when I serve a green leafy vegetable. <laughs> I can't imagine saying, honey, don't fill up on junk. We're having stuffed mosquito tonight. <laughs> I have a 15-year-old who, uh, uh, he's an angry boy. He has, uh, he has ADD, and he loves to argue. It's his favorite thing in the world. He just argues all the time. I'm driving him the other day, and he says, will you buy me a car? 
And I said, no, honey, I'm not buying you a car. And he had a big fit about it. And I said, listen to me, just stop. I said, in order to get a license, you have to be able to focus and follow directions. And he said, and I quote, I want to sell my clothes at that store right there. <laughs> We just, it's been kind of a weird year at the Poundstone home. Uh, this year was my uh, middle daughter's first year in college. I drove her 17 hours uh, up to college and, and I realized after we get up there, you know, I can't do that every day. <laughs> and so, I mean, I just left her. We had a weird thing happen, a terrible thing actually happened this year. My son, a few months ago, uh, my 15-year-old, uh, he, I came home from work one day and his head was distended. And, uh, you know, long story short, I, I, we took, I took him to uh, the emergency room and, and they said they did some scans and they came out, I swear to you, after five hours, they came out and said he has an infection in his brain and he has to have a, a brain surgery. And he and I looked at each other and just started to laugh. We go, that is ridiculous. <laughs> And they said, well, we don't have a brain surgery team here. So they ambulanced to us to, us to another hospital uh, where we got there. We were descended upon by three teams of doctors. And the brain surgeon said to me, well, we're not going to do uh, brain surgery. And frankly, I was a little disappointed by that time because I was planning on slipping a fiver to uh, tweak some things while he was in there. And let's face it, that's a rare opportunity. <laughs> But the ear, nose, and throat doctor said she was going to do surgery. So uh, in a three-hour surgery, they drilled through the bone underneath his eyebrow, which was fine because he was going to do that anyways. <laughs> and they put in uh, a, a straw. They put a straw in the hole into his head so that they could shoot medicine directly into his head, which worked great for me because I had been using his ears. And so... <laughs> I now had a I was able to just go to the straw and go pick up your socks. <laughs> You've been great. Thank you so much. Come on. Is that true? Wow. Can't take a seat done. That's that's true. That's true about Thomas. Is that's that a true story. Is, is he all right now? fine like the day after he was fine really? I, could, I could tell because he was a jerk again oh, all right. and I'm like he's fine you know what he, did? he was in the ICU for eight nights and the protocol has it that they have them on a heart monitor but in truth he didn't really need a heart monitor but what he did was he figured out how to breathe weird and make the nurses come in could he teach me that breathing <laughs> that's amazing he's I like fine. your suit tonight yeah, you're very you, uh, you, you know your eye catch it No, it's good. That's enough. nice to hear because, you know, your last guest had so many talents that I was always watching, and I did yeah. watch, and uh, he seemed wonderful. And I, I began to feel, you know, uh, less, th you know, because he would write the novel, yeah, yeah. you know, does the, the, the rapping. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. He's a rapper. Yeah, he well, raps. Yeah, come on. Just yeah. say it. He raps, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I do some rapping in my kitchen. Now, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Why do you rap? My, rap kids, oh, my kids love it when I rap. Really? I don't yeah, know. I yeah, do. I don't know I if do. I would like it. I do. I do. Uh, I do. Uh, I, I do a, uh, a rapping character called Peace on Me, and uh, my children, my children love it. Really? As they serve the milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you serve? Do you do you do that? Do because well, I've heard, rap you know, for the my last kids. Last time I was here. Yeah, rap for your kids. No, he wouldn't let me. Yeah, my my, my oldest boy would be like, Dad, uh, just don't even try that. And. <laughs> My uh, youngest boy, he's only two, is, is interested in fire trucks. That's all he wants to talk about is fire trucks. You know, he yeah, came over to me, I actually, remember. this is true, last night he came over to me and he said, Dad, I have to talk to you a question. I said, okay. And he said, how about fire trucks? And I said, they're great. He went, yes, they are. You know what? That is so great because he's becoming like a little uh, talk show host. A little bit, yeah, yeah. I have to talk oh, no, to I you. hate that idea. I That's talk. horrible. He's going to be, he's going to be your, your chief rival. Oh, no, no, on no. The, on the French show. <laughs> he can't speak French. He can barely speak English at the moment, to be honest. No, I, mean, I love, a half. I have to talk to you a question. I love that. <laughs> I have to talk to you a question. Yeah. And do you correct that or you just let that go? I'll let it go. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. They'll pick it up at college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
How many have you got in college now? Two, one? I have, uh, I have one in college. Oh, My middle daughter is in college. That's expensive. And you know why she's in college? Did you get clever? she wrote her assignments down and then did them. <laughs> Yeah, which seems to have just totally befuddled my other, my other two. Yeah. I, my, sadly, it was never something I was fond of doing. I, uh, no, no, I would no, never do that. No. Hence this. Yeah. Uh, my son one time tried to reach out to her, and I thought this was touching in a screwed up poundstone kind of a way. He said to her, he said, you know, the reason mom knows you have homework is that you write it down. <laughs> It's touching, it's isn't it? Yeah, it's a, leaving a trail. Yeah. It's, it's kind of touching. It is touching. touching. It you means know, they're looking out for each other. I still read aloud to my 15-year-old uh, because he likes it and I like it. It's actually my favorite part of my whole day, probably, is reading aloud reading to aloud? my, what are you to reading my 50. I'm, right now I'm reading him David Copperfield. And, uh, and he, so the other day, he's supposed to be reading Brave New World for school. But, right. Uh, um, I've read uh, that. Mr. Ojeda, he's not. Uh, <laughs> His teacher is Mr. Al-Qaeda? Mr. No, no, but I'll bet that mistake happens a lot. No. You're welcome, eighth, ninth grade, tenth grade? Mr. Ojeda. Yeah. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. It's... Mr. Al-Qaeda. It's not. It's Mr. Ojeda. You know, Today I... we'll study death to America. Uh, <laughs> with Mr. Al-Qaeda. I tell you. Well, there may be some connection there, because, ma'am, when I go through the TSA, they are all over me. The other day, I had, suit. I had a plastic, <laughs> I had a plastic pop tart container. Like there's a container for the two at a time, uh, you know, for the pop tarts, right? There, it's shaped like a pop tart. It is plastic pop tart, fake icing on the cover, and it says pop tart on it. Yeah, and, I, I'm not that up on show business things, okay, but okay. Well, is, all right, so I have that in my bag. And I go through security, and they go, the guy picks it up, I swear to you, and he goes, what's in here? <laughs> and I, I felt like, I'm looking for the camera, he's a joke, right? I go, uh, Pop-Tarts. <laughs> and by the way, if there weren't Pop-Tarts in there, if there was something illicit, you know what I mean? What was I gonna say? You know, like an M16? Why would I? Yeah. Like, oh my God, you got my heroin. I feel so silly. <laughs> Usually. Usually I, I roll it up in my underwear, but what I... What are you doing taking Pop-Tarts on a damn airplane? <laughs> How long was this airplane ride? It, it, I really only need a few minutes before I have a hankering, but I... Uh, <laughs> no, they don't serve food anymore, and so you have to bring your Pop-Tarts. <laughs> What did you do when you guys went to France? Did you like rent a plane or something? Did you have your rent own plane? a plane? This show? Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I figure with the savings from the band. Oh no! Don't you start? No, Whoa. I think since you, since you don't have a band, you've been socking it away for your airplane. <laughs> well, you caught me. So, uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I caviar and uh, roast ox. You guys. By the way, this is the first time I've been in the new big oh, studio. What do you think? Oh my God, the difference! <laughs> I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you in when you insisted on having a bigger studio, yeah. didn't I say to you? It's not going to make any difference. It doesn't whatsoever. make any difference at no, all. No, the yeah. only person who got more space is the horse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, at least somebody's happy. Yeah. Oh, and look how happy he is. Look at him. Yeah, he smiles all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, we're out of time. No, uh, we're this, not. Yeah, we are actually. You no. Know, yeah. Look, there's a clock right over there with we, zeros on it. That's how you know. Say a couple of minutes and you sock it away for your airplane. That's what you do. <laughs> you are ripping these people off. They have at least two or three more minutes. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You are. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. First of all, this is free. <laughs> Secondly, it's the middle of the night. If I am ripping them off, they're too sleepy to know. Yeah, they know. What are you gonna? Are you gonna say something about that? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going. I was gonna plug it a bit and then throw a commercial break. Or you could if you want. No, no. It's oh, come on. Come on. It looks better, I think, if you say. All right then. Do you want me to do like a whole talk show thing around it? I wouldn't. Either that, or we'll have your kid come do it. <laughs> well, Don't it's not a fire truck, but people seem to enjoy it. Everyone. Give a right back.
My next guest is a very funny comedian. Very, very funny, Jeff. She's a legend. She's a legend. She's an American treasure. She's just released her new CD, I Heart Jokes. Paula tells them in Boston, which is available on Amazon, iTunes, and her website. Please welcome the lovely Paula Poundstone, everybody. <laughs> Tribute. I thought it was good. I thought it made sense. That was it was nice. nice. That was nice. Hey, I have a, I have a trigger finger. Uh, have you heard? It goes down, but it won't get up again. And so uh, I have, so I wear the. Originally, I was told to do buddy taping, which is where you tape the finger to another finger, and it's best to use the one beside it. Uh, but uh, what happened with that was very much like any other intervention in my family, which is that the bad finger was influencing the good finger. Uh, I have a 16-year-old son at home, which is, it turns out, is one of the worst things that can happen to a person. Oh, my heavens. I, sometimes at night, after I get him in bed, I go into my room and complete my sentences. It's horrible. It's awful. And you know, I, I feel stupid saying this, but it's true. I, uh, I did a little research, because it, it dawned on me one day that maybe girls were different than boys, and I have two older daughters. And uh, I, I, I looked up, as it turns out, for boys, their frontal lobe doesn't come in until between 25 and 30. <laughs> And that's the reasoning and, and, and organizing part. <laughs> and sometimes I check on them at night and it, it, nothing. It is, there's a divot there. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. I, I just went to a memorial for a, a, a friend of mine and, and, and they had uh, beautiful pictures of the guy up and then films of him playing with his kids by the pool. And I thought, you know, I, I gotta get better pictures. <laughs> and maybe hire somebody to play my kids. <laughs> Am I the only one? Is it just, a, are we the only ones who struggle? That's what I, I wonder. I, I was listening on the radio the other day. There was an ad. There's these two therapists, a husband and a wife. Have you heard this? And they've come up with uh, an audio tape series on coping with your teenager. And the woman does the ad. Do you know what I'm talking about? She says, it's, the woman does the ad and she goes, I will never forget the day that my son Jeremy slammed the door and said, I hate you. <laughs> And I thought, really? That sticks out in your mind? <laughs> uh, that, that's good morning in our house. <laughs> you, you have two boys, right? You have two boys. Oh, yeah. 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 Is there anything you can do about that? No, no, nothing at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> My, my son, over the summer, was supposedly going to get a job, and so he was filling out applications. He's 16, and in fairness to him, he'd not been through the process before, but apparently, he just, when he went to fill out the applications, he knew nothing about himself. Uh, he says to me, he was filling out an application for a place called Paquito Moss, which is a chain Mexican place, and he goes, have I ever worked before? I said, not a bit, honey. And he goes, do, do I have any degrees? I go, sweetie, I think not knowing if you have a degree is the same as not having it, really. Uh, then, then he was filling out one for Bed Bath & Beyond, which is just cruel. It, it's, a, it's, it's not just the regular kind, they tear off the pad. It's their own, it folds out, there's essay questions. One of the questions was, uh, why do you want to work at the Bed Bath & Beyond? Which is, and then you have to sign a thing to say you're honest. If, you know, the honest answer, you wouldn't get a job. <laughs> The honest answer is, because I don't have enough degrees to sling beans over at the Paquito Moss. That's <laughs> the honest answer. I said, oh. I, I said no, put, put uh, I've always been interested in the beyond. <laughs> Thank you very much. Get him,
Your poor thing dealing with the boys. It's, oh, it's, uh, it's horrible. It's yeah, awful. Yeah, you know little... what? Speaking of horrible and awful, I, you know, I you're told... not going to talk about my mustache, are you? No. All right. I, no. I, when I first glanced at the monitor, I said David Niven is guest hosting. Thank tonight. you. That's... Thank you. No, this is the thing about horrible and awful. On my way here tonight, I tweeted that I was doing my last uh, Craig Ferguson, and I assured my followers that I would try to talk you out of it. I don't understand. Can I, you know, I don't, I've never done, you know, in my act when I'm on stage, which I do, I perform around the country stand-up comedy. Yep. And, uh, You've done some in Boston, in I've fact. I've done some in Boston, yes. and I was hoping I had a CD to represent that. Yes, here it is. All right, uh, yeah. Oh, look, there's a CD inside. When you do your stand-up in Boston, do you dress in colonial, uh... I try to dress in the garb of okay. wherever I am. Everyone in Boston likes to wear this. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... I'll tell you something I do when I'm on stage, and yeah. I've never done it here. I don't know how the camera thing's going to work for this, but yeah. uh, I often do a puppet show uh, when I'm on stage, and I thought it goes. <laughs> so when I was thinking about not being able to be here anymore, and I knew, I knew that you would not have a serious conversation with me about it. <laughs> and so I just, I just want to. Say, okay, like, okay, this is me here, and this is you. I, I, okay? I just want to say, you know, Craig, thank you so much. No one else ever even wanted me on their show. And uh, you are the funniest of all these late night guys by far. Well, I don't know about that so much. Well, <laughs> No, you are. You're the very funniest one. And I don't understand why you... What are you going to do, a game show? Yeah. <laughs> What's the language on the show? It doesn't matter. It's not like I'm going to be asked back. <laughs> What about Jimmy Fallon? Couldn't you get on Jimmy Fallon? They won't let me on Jimmy Fallon doing this stuff. I can't think why. <laughs> well, <it isn't. laughs> well, it's all right. Look, Laura, I want to explain something to you. Just because I'm not doing this show. No, put it in the form of a question. <laughs> Helping you with your game show. Stuff. No, 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 no. It's a different. That's a different game show. I'm not oh, doing that. Go. Oh, the mustache makes me look like Trebek. Is that what you're saying? No. No. Well, can look. I have a letter? Can I have an A? Can I have a letter? <laughs> Just trying to help you get ready for your game. No, no, no. Listen to me. You're bumming out the entire country, leaving this show. We love this w show. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> No. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. No, wait. No, the, the oh. thing is, I, are you all right? I'm good. Okay, now, here's the thing. Because you stopped yeah, Daniels doing... didn't do that, did he? <laughs> he wanted to. <laughs> he was making out with the stage manager in the back. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, he's... Yeah, there's a whole you don't want to make... Don't make out with him, you get it's shingles. A, it's yeah. A... <laughs> No, I... All right, so explain. I'm no, sorry. No, no, just because you stop doing one thing, it doesn't mean that you stop doing, being yourself and doing things. It's just... It's the same thing, Craig. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Look, for example, I am... Let's pretend I'm an author, all right? I have finished... You, can, you are an author. All right, okay, okay, look. All right, I have finished writing that book. Well, that book's written, and then... Every, what? you have finished writing the book? Oh, no! No, I'll write another book. No, it won't be the same as that book. <laughs> That's right, it'll be a different book. I don't like change. Change is the law of God's mind and resistance to it is the source of all pain. We're atheists. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Change is the law of the universe and resistance to it is the source of all pain. Yes, but it'll be fine. Yeah, it's it'll just be a transition period. That's yeah, all. Yeah. 
This, okay, speaking of therapy, this is a very closed off position, I'm told. No, no, no. Not, not if See combined with this. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no, that scared me. We're, now, we're out of time. What do you mean we're out of time? Well, what happens I is that, you know, the sun uh, the is in the center and the earth goes around the sun and <laughs> we divide it up into little segments that we all get little portions of and the little portion of that earth going around the sun moment that we set aside for us to have a chat on late night television is <laughs> over. <laughs> Don't blame me, blame the God you don't believe in. Well, thanks for having me. Well, it's been very nice. Anytime on any show I'm ever doing, you are always welcome. The great Paula Poundstone, everybody. everybody. <laughs>Please state your name for the ladies and gentlemen. Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yes. Elizabeth, you got a sore foot? I do. <laughs> Is it really sore or did you just do it to attract my attention? Because <laughs> I got to tell you, you were doing fine without any <laughs> foot stuff. Um, I actually hurt my back. You hurt your back? Well, sit yeah. down then. Do you want to sit All down? Right. Yeah. Sit down. Nice. I've got some chairs here. Nice. Sorry. All right. All right. You got some lights on? Yeah. Here, I'll sit over here. All right. All right. Have you got lights on? I know I'm confusing you by moving around this vast set. <laughs> oh, look at you turning a light on as if we were actually... <laughs> Elizabeth, what, what happened Sorry. to your foot? Oh, your back, I mean. Um, like three years ago, I got hit by a car. So oh, I broke no. my spine. What? And I was completely paralyzed. No. So I was using a wheelchair. And now I'm like learning to walk again. That's fantastic. I know. I know. That's I'm excited. great. So. Why did you come here, though, if you can? <laughs> I'm legit, legit. We only came to California to see you. You're oh. not kidding. I'm, no, I'm serious. Really? Yeah. From where? Colorado. It's not that far. <laughs> no, that's, that's pretty. That's great. I'm really excited. So why, if you hurt your spine, is your foot in a, in a thing? Because I was paralyzed. So that's like... It's my last oh, the, paralyzed it, thing, it's so it's like helping thing. me walk. And will will uh, will it return to normal health? Will you be able to wiggle your toes? I don't know, because like with every spinal injury, they're pretty much like, eh, I don't know if you'll walk again. Like just because the spine is so unpredictable. Oh right. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Just I don't, like, I don't yeah. know anything about uh, spines. Well, I know. Now you do. That is fantastic. How long could you not walk? Um, it was about a year. That's awful. <laughs> well. It, it's gone better, so. so yeah. I'm very it's it's like it's a it's a thrill ride this story though. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, I gotta say you kept in shape. Oh well thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Could you take your mind out of the gutter for a minute? Well, I was going to do the secret sign and send yeah, you, you back to your seat, but no, I can't no? do that. No, we'll, well, uh, we'll have to. What we'll do is we'll take a commercial break and then we'll have Jeff carry you back to Okay. Your... Right. But I'm glad that you told us your inspiring story of recovery to well, health. It's, it's almost like something good happened on this show for a change. <laughs> Beautiful Elizabeth, all the way from Colorado.